live from the cultural void of Independence, Ohio, the fastest growing AM Sunday evening show on this station. What does that mean? Who am I? The big voice man will tell you right now. The Rick Gilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. Phone number 5781100 in the classic 216 area code. Toll free 888723 WTAM. 38 states and half of Canada. Anywhere within the sound of my dulcet tones. How are ya? How are ya? How are ya? Well, I haven't been in this chair for two weeks. Did a lot of filling in, uh, Bill Wills, but hadn't done my program. Ah, the luxury of time on this program versus Sky Chief Traffic and Weather together every 10 minutes on the 10s. This one a service up. <laughs> Which you actually only say 16 times a morning. It seems like 1,600, but it's only 16. So how have you been? I was just having this wild idea earlier that I thought that... Uh, the hamburger helper helping hand and the Arby's oven mitt ought to have a ste steel cage thumb wrestling match to the death. Wouldn't that be interesting? Uh, I thought that maybe help, because uh, I saw this hamburger helper commercial and I thought, well, you know, I thought maybe that Arby's was going to get mad and sue or something. Or, or the other way around, hamburger helper was going to get mad and sue because the hamburger helper helping hand's been around for how long? Since we were little kids or something, right? There was always the hamburger helper helping hand. That wasn't always the Arby's oven mitt. Yeah, see, and then uh, winner eats all and gets a golden glove. <laughs> Sounded like a good idea to me. Somebody else was mentioning something about uh, some barber in Maple Heights talking about trying to get rid of smoking in Maple Heights like they're trying to talk about, like Matt Zone's talking about in Cleveland, and then like they're talking about in Garfield Heights, and do I have to have a, don't, don't make me come out there, Maple Heights. Do I have to have another smoker's rights rally? Have one in Maple Heights? So it's not just about smoking. You know, it's not just smoking, it's about your rights being frittered away one by one, little by little. And speaking of cigarettes, I heard something on the news somewhere about they said something about a lifetime supply of cigarettes for celebrities that smoke in public. And I thought, well, wh where do I sign up? Sounded like a good idea to me. Maybe they, maybe they just mean big fancy pants type celebrities, you know, like out there in California. 193 people are now signed up to run for governor if Gray Davis gets recalled. Signatures collected by the candidates have to be verified before they can actually get onto the ballot. Officials uh, at the election board out there are going to have to take on the task of assembling a ballot with that many names on it. Aw, oh, I feel so badly for them. They have to do it every day, five days a week. No, they're going to do it once every few years. So we'll find out October 7th who the new governor will be. You got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Lieutenant Governor Cruz Bustamante, former baseball commissioner Peter Uberath, political commentator Ariana Huffington, and we've got Larry Flint, who's running on the platform that he's a smart paddler with a heart. Threw his wheelchair in the ring. Gary Coleman, that's, you know, I guess the long and short of it, right? He's on the, the, short, the short list. And Angeline, that, you know, lady with the big, you know, the Dagmars and the big hooters. Been on billboards around L.A. for years. So I was just thinking, just out of curiosity, let's say something like that happened locally. You know, we've got Lady Bug Jane Campbell, the queen of the flying hubcap. Now, what if we were to recall Mayor Campbell and we had a whole list of people and personality type types from around the Cleveland area that we're going to run. So let, let, why don't we do that? Pick some celebrities. Now, I don't know. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a pretty big celebrity, right? Would you say he's one of the biggest celebrities in Hollywood? 
I would have to assume. I mean, I would not say that the quality of his work is up there with Jack Nicholson or Robert De Niro or something. But let's just go by popularity and box office sales would indicate that he's pretty popular. So who are the most popular celebrities in Cleveland, Ohio? I mean, who, who's we going to run John Lanigan for mayor? Dick Goddard for mayor? I don't know. I thought, you know, we'd make a list of celebrities. I'll, I'll write them down. See what you think. See who, who gets the most votes this evening. We're going to try and vote for a local celebrity to be mayor. LeBron James for mayor? I mean, you, you know, you, you, yeah, Drew Carey for, for mayor. You know, you have to have, it has to be somebody that lives around here still. And I think Drew still keeps a house here. But it has to be somebody also that you would think would be capable of taking on the job of mayor. I mean, properly. Um, you know, it's being done now, but it's all partnering with the gay community. Today I'm partnering with high school superintendents. She's always partnering with somebody or ribbon cutting. It's all the Campbell administration does is a bunch of ribbon cutting. So who would you pick as a celebrity? And why would you think they would be qualified? Geez, must be a popular topic. All the lines lit up. I'm not even giving anything away but the adulation of your host. That's all you get. The adulation of your host. Now, I don't know. I mean, I haven't even... I thought about it, and it was my idea, but I thought, I can't really... I'm trying to think of a celebrity. How do you rate celebrity in a town like Cleveland? We really don't have many... Uh, what would you... Do we have TV personalities? I mean, they're basically... You're talking about news people, aren't you? News people, weather people... Dick Fagler, he might not make a bad mayor. Although he's getting, kind of getting grumpier in his old age. He did that routine I'm afraid to go to. He quit smoking, then he gained 30 pounds, then he started smoking again. Well, no, no one wants to do that, do they? I mean, I could, I could stand to gain 30 pounds, that wouldn't hurt me. Except that I'd have to go out and buy all new clothes. I don't want to do that. But the idea of quitting smoking and then gaining 30 pounds and then starting to smoke again. Well, now you not only got to pay for cigarettes. You got to load all that extra food on top of it, plus the new clothes. And you're not doing anything for your health. Then if you're a little overweight to begin with, and then you quit smoking and gain 30 pounds. Well, now you're a big fat pig that smokes. And that can't be good. Larry, you're on the air. Bro, what's up? Hey. Long time, man. Nice to be back in the chair. Hey, I caught a couple of your morning shows, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, check the Abertron ratings. I bet you more people listen to you in the morning than listen to Howard Stern. No, I have no idea. Dude, it was good to hear you in the morning, man, but I missed you on Sunday night, dude. It's not my show. Uh, I, don't have, I don't have enough time to sit and develop ideas and come up with yeah, topics. No, it was missing a lot. Yeah, it has, well, it's not missing any commercials. No, the commercials are there, but just you couldn't be yourself. No, I know. I, I, I think the biggest chunk of time I had was from 5.11 a.m. to 5.15. Man, just like, you know, I'm like, oh, cool, Rick's on the morning, you know? But it's like, I got, I listen to you, but it's like... There's, there's the important thing, as long as you listen. Oh, big time, dude. Okay. Oh, hey, nothing. You got a full plate tonight, man. As far as those broad things, celebrity and Cleveland, gee, I don't know who they'd have to pick, man. You couldn't pick Bob Hope unless they dug him up. No, he wouldn't be much of a candidate. He's, he's kind of a stiff. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, if you wanted to gain some weight, I'll hook you up with my buddy John in Garfield Heights, man. He'll, he'll feed you. No, I hook up with Billy F. Tour. I was watching PBS, and they had these people on there cooking stuff, and he made some kind of uh, spinach lasagna or something uh, with seafood in it. I thought, boy, it looks delicious, and it's got to be 10,000 calories. Hey, I, we got to hook up one Saturday night, dude. We're going to go out, man. Yeah, you can meet me at Sokolowski's. Well, oh, you going back there again? Yeah, we'll peg out there. I was pegging out there last night. Oh, I'll watch it. Hey, man, I dropped 200 pounds already on my diet. Did you lose hundreds of pounds in seconds on the new auto crash diet? No, yeah, ten, in ten, less than ten, about ten, a little over 10 months, dude. 200 pounds. 200 pounds, man, still going. How'd you do that? To don't eat. I mean, oh, cut all uh, the stuff out, eat good stuff. 
Well, what, what, what kind of bad stuff were you eating before? No, I didn't eat a lot of junk food. I just like, hey, mom's home cooking, dude. Oh, you mean like... I like to cook, and I'm a good cook. You mean like crown roasts and that sort of oh, thing? Oh, dude, man, pork sauerkraut and dumplings. Oh, well, the sauerkraut will keep you regular. That'll and clean that, you out. Um, the beer? Well... You know how beer is. Well, now, what kind of beer do you drink, regular or light? Anything. No, oh, anything, that, anything that moves. That's right. Yeah, well, you know, I noticed I was getting a pot belly from drinking uh, beer on tap that was, uh, you know, the heavy stuff. And I noticed, uh, geez, why am I, why are my pants getting tight? I'm eating the same. And I thought, oh, it must be when I go out and, and drink a couple beers at the bar, I'm getting the heaviest stuff I can find. Yeah. I switched back to the light, and the pounds went away. I'll tell you, a really good beer, not to plug it, but that I tried, because I've been on my diet, it's been really cool. But, like, a couple weeks ago, I, I, I treated myself to a couple of those uh, Michelob Ultra Lights. Uh, to me, it tastes like water. Yeah, I know, but, I mean... I mean, if you're watching your carbs, I suppose that's a good yeah, thing. I mean, if, yeah, it's... And now, uh, see, because I got, you know, I got buddies of mine, like my friend John. I go to shop, weigh myself once a month, and he, he sees, you know, sees what I'm doing in that, man. I'm doing it. And I want to be like thin like you one day, buddy. Well, you know, I used to weigh two and a half. I dropped about 75 pounds and kept it off for about, uh, it's been over 10 years now, by eating once a day. That was basically all I, I was doing. That's, that's, that's a good idea. Well, it worked for me, but uh, the line of work I'm in, I don't exactly have to go out and, uh, and, and pick up heavy things all day for a living like I used to. I mean, I used to be loading 150 pounds of uh, boxes, big boxes of bearings all day long. And by the time lunch came around, you were pretty damned hungry. Yeah, you have to go out and pick out some big, heavy women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all i got to do now is go hogging. Yeah. Yeah, just go out and pick up the fat ones. The only oh, problem dude. is if, if they sleep over, they're so heavy if they're laying on your arm. You know, that routine. Oh, you know who else is running for um, governor in uh, California is that Mary Carey, that porno star. Oh, really? Yeah, she says, vote for me and I will give a Hummer in every town or every... Uh, There'll be a Hummer in every pot in a car. Or yeah, chicken, a Hummer a chi in every house or something like and that. And a chicken in every garage. Yeah, she's yeah. a wacko. Yeah, well, there's a, look at it. It's California, Larry. There's a lot of wackos in California. I know, but I'm thinking, you put a question out there, Cleveland, like, man, I'm thinking, like, well, you can't visit Art Modell, you know, they never, you know, but... I'm well, it's got to like, be, it would have to be somebody that lives here now that would would be electable to, uh, you know, who, who would be electable to the office of mayor, and it would have to be, I don't know if the, I mean, look at Boss White, he was not necessarily a likable character, but he did get some things done. How about you? Well, I would have no interest whatsoever in being any kind of a politician in the city of Cleveland, uh, not for a million dollars. Well, for a million dollars, maybe, but I, I, that is a big job, and you've got to put up with a bunch of crap. You know, I luck would get Dennis Kucinich back here. I don't think that I'd like that idea at all. I know. I know. Yeah, in fact, uh, Dennis, I think, was on CNN or something, and they didn't see fit to save any of the sound bites or anything, so apparently he didn't rate. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let you go, but dude, it's good to hear you back on Sunday night, and you rule. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. All right, you have a good one, bro. I already do. Triple Doppler forecast from TV3's Betsy Kling. Tonight, clear, uh, currently 73 degrees in Cleveland, 73. You know, you can win a 2003 Ford F-150 Super Crew Lariat valued at over 34000 bucks in the Cleveland Ford WTAM tailgate party truck giveaway. That's a pretty fancy truck, don't you think? Thirty-four grand. Start calling tomorrow morning for your chance to win one of 111 keys. Doesn't that sound funny? Yeah, we're giving away keys. Not those kind of keys. Get your mind out of Miami. We're talking about ignition keys. And one of them will fit that truck. And they'll find out on Wells and Coleman on September 12th. Wells and Coleman in the morning, they'll see who's going to be driving away in the number one selling vehicle in the world for over 21 years. 21 years in a row, how about that? And it's not like some kind of a lease deal where you've got to give the thing back. It's yours, you own it. A Ford F-150. Ford F-150. Courtesy of Cleveland Ford and the big one, News Radio, WTAM 1100. Joe, talk to me. Hey, what's going on? Hey, you're just doing a program. When is the mob going to stop running Cleveland? Well, gee, I don't know if you could necessarily call it the mob. I thought it was just dirty politics. Well, what else is there? It's called the mob. That's dirty, dirty this, dirty that. The mob is dirty. Everybody's dirty. All the politicians are dirty. Mayor, or, uh, uh, Governor Taft, okay, imposes this one-cent sales tax. Yeah, the penny has tax, every, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Has everything pushed through Congress here? real quick, and then all of a sudden turns around and says, whoa, where did we get this $180 million? Yeah, we found money. 
Okay. I don't hear anybody making a big stink about that. Well, I made a big stink about it, but the problem is the politicians just seem to let it slide right by. And, and I'm thinking, well, you know, once they, once, they, wait a minute, once they found that money, they should have repealed the tax. Exactly. Why don't they try putting the repeal the tax on the ballot and see how many people vote to repeal the tax? Well, it's already set in the law. Yeah, because we did not get the, the chance to vote on it, did we, to begin with? Exactly, which, which half of the things that, that involve Joe Public's money, is it, they're not involved anyway. It's mostly the politicians that are making the, the decisions for the people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I hear, the, I hear the, other, the other day there's a, uh, there, there, there's a, uh, a local congressman that are trying, is trying to outlaw scooters because... Uh, that's Nelson, N Nelson Centron. Okay, Nelson said try. Doesn't that beat all? A child might die. A child might die on a scooter. I know. I heard Trev, and he, he was... Okay, right. Yeah. I mean, I was behind him all the way. I mean, Trev Asano's got a lot of good points. Uh, you know, as far as mayor, Jane Campbell isn't a mayor. It's like you said. She's a ribbon cutter. Yeah, she's basically like the, the hostess in a restaurant. Exactly. And she shows and, you, know, you where the door is or the seat is or something. And, 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 and in my opinion of all politicians, are, if you want to become a millionaire, become a politician. Because well, but yeah, that's the problem is because, you know, I, I, I think that people start out with the grandest of intentions, but then they get hungry and greedy, and, and how, how can a lot of people turn down a whole lot of money? I mean, you know, well, they'll, build well, you your, it, they'll build you your brand new house, but then they own you forever. Exactly. That's the whole thing. They own you forever. Yep. But then again, it, it, it's not hard to pay a politician off either. Well, you know, I hope I mean, it... How do most of them become millionaires? Well, I hope it's like the old days. In the old days, when you paid a judge off, they, you know, they stayed bought. Exactly. Right. Well, that's 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 the that's all the county commissioners. That's Mayor Campbell. That's Sheriff McFall. Of course, I'm I'm not even going to get in with with him because, as far as I'm concerned, he's a crooked bastard too. He's a he's a the pipe fitter. Uh, well, yeah, he's a he's a non-educated pipe fitter. So well, he knows how to fit pipes. I don't know how to do that. Right. And so does his son. He knows how to fit a pipe right into his mouth. Hey, whoa, hey, hey now, hey now, Chad, you're on the air. Yeah, I got a, a celebrity for you. Okay. No one thought about this guy. We're talking about Cleveland here now. Yeah. Drew Carey. Well, uh, but the problem with Drew is he don't live around here no more. <laughs> he can come back, though. Yeah, but I, I would hope that his job as mayor would be doing a little better than his TV show is doing lately. Yeah, but he loves to drink beer and he loves to watch sports and Cleveland sports. Well, all right. Is that the criteria for being mayor? It is out in California, so why not here? Uh, well, uh, well, I'll put him down, but I think he'd have to be some kind of a write-in or something. I don't know. I'm trying to find somebody local, you know, somebody that's still here. Well, I think he still owns the house that he used to grow up here, right? I believe you're right. So he's still so, got a residence here, technically. Yeah, so he could still run. So you'd vote for Drew Carey? Well, why not? All right, I'll put down one vote for Drew, and we'll collect some more names and collect some more votes, and then we'll come to a decision, and we'll have a quorum, and we'll come to order and all that, and then we'll, we'll, we'll find out who we think the next... Who we, the, the people in Cleveland, think the next mayor should be. That sounds good. All right. Talk to you later there, Tiger. Chuck, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Gilly? Just great. All right. Number one, uh, Michelob Ultra is an excellent drink. I think it's watery. It, that, that's the point. After you get off a hard day of work, you drink that down, you get the same effect as you would from the heavier stuff. No, it I, works good. I don't know about that now. Is that true? Does it, does it, can you catch a buzz from Michelob Ultra? Yes. I thought, the, I thought the alcohol content was lower, too. Uh, I don't think so. Because I know if you, it, cause if you take Coors Light in a can and you put it in the back of a cooler in a bar, it'll freeze. There's so <laughs> little alcohol in it. <clears throat> well, I, I can't tell the difference between the two. Just the one goes down like water, like you said. Yeah, I, I get the same effect. I kind of like Miller Lite. You know, it just that don't taste like anything either, but it works. It's pretty good. Mick, Mick Lite's pretty good, too. You know, the only problem I ever had with Michelob products was that they seem like they got more fizz than regular beer, and I always get the hiccups. Do you remember the Michelob Dry? Michel yeah, Michelob Dry. That was hurt my heart when they... But they put that off the market. Oh, I that thought... That was my beer. Yeah, well, that was a pretty good beer. That was a very good beer, but they, that was about the only person to drink it, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, apparently it wasn't real popular. Apparently. Yeah. Okay, Mayor of Cleveland. Yeah. I wish she was still alive. would be Joey Maxson. Well, how about somebody that's still alive? I know, I'm just saying, but the, who's the livest left? George Forbes? You know, I really don't think George Forbes would be a bad mayor. Absolutely, either. He wouldn't play. Yeah, I mean, you know, George Forbes is one of these guys that's like, you want me to do something I don't want to do or something I don't think's good for the city, screw you. That's right. He, if, he threw, if he threw his chair in the ring, I'd vote for him. Me too. All right, thanks. All right, my man. All right, talk to you later. 
Uh, I think we got time for another one before we uh, check in with what in the world's happening. Bob, got hey, a candidate? Hey, man, what's up? Hey. Hey, I got two choices. All right. Number one is Butch Davis. He certainly is not for the regular Clevelander because he can't see that a guy that's only making $600,000 can throw a football better than somebody that's getting $6 million. So he's used to screwing the fans. And number two is how about one of these church homos, man, that can't make it as bishop? They'd be good. A Thanks, Billy. All right. What do you say? Church homo? Which particular church homo did you have in mind? Do I have to make a separate list for church homos? Well, I don't know about Butch Davis. I, I questioned that theory as well. You know? Because I watched that game. And I thought, well, at least Holcomb's willing to take a chance and throw. Instead of just playing everything, uh, keeping it on the ground and running it up the middle. Uh, gee, can't you see that coming after about the second, third time? Yeah, I think so. Is he a, a, a gain of negative one, you know? Push him back, push him back. I think the problem with the receivers is that they, they need to use some soap and water before the game and get that butter off their fingers. That would help. It would do, do, do a lot right there, don't you think? I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend. More of the program after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on Cleveland's only news radio station, WTAM 1100. The following material may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. or how to balance the books or how to run a state. Apparently, he would not have to know a whole lot to match Gray Davis's uh, gubernatorial techniques out there. That, that place is a mess. Best thing that could happen to California is have it crumble and fall into the sea. Their run's over. They had a nice run out there for a while, you know. They had it going good. They were making a lot of money. It's over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Put the gun down and come out, John Rambo. It's over. Remember the first time you watched First Blood? Could you understand a damn thing that came out of Sylvester Stallone's mouth? Hey, maybe he'd be the perfect politician. Put him in Rambo mode. And everybody go, yay! Nice job. I have no idea. Most things that politicians say don't make much sense anyway, so what's the difference? Joe, you're on the air. Are you there, Joseph? Hello, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, Pyro Joe from Parma. Do you burn things? Uh, actually, I'm a campfire builder. Oh, I see. So that they, I, they, teach, they... I teach kids how to build campfires. You know, uh, Cub Scouts and campers and have you ever like that. have you ever started a fire by rubbing two sticks together? Uh, actually, yes. If one of them's a match, right? <laughs> of course. No, no. It, it, you don't know, just don't rub two sticks together. You have to really, like, you have to cause some friction and energy and... And wear glasses. some heat. Yeah. You know. So you have to wear glasses. No, you don't have to wear glasses. No, oh, okay. No. All right. Uh, you could do it with a magnifying glass. Yeah, I've done that. I burned bugs, too. Yeah, I've done that, too. Yeah, ants on the driveway. I actually took a uh, air rifle with a scope on it and cut a wasp in half in my younger <laughs> years. That was a pretty good uh, shot. See, you're sicker than I am. Well, that was a pretty good shot, I thought, to cut a wasp in half. There you go. I, well, know, I know a guy used to take broomsticks. He'd take the little, you know, uh, not the handle, not the broom handle, but one of the sticks off the bottom of the broom. Uh, and he, he'd catch a, a big horse fly, and he'd stick it up the horse fly's backside. And then when you'd let go of this thing, it'd sit there with its wings going, and you'd let go of the broomstick, and it'd fly straight into the wall at about 20 mile an hour. Oh, God. Splat. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking to you. Uh, I can't believe you called. You, you know, no, man, you're going mean, to get me in some kind of trouble. I'm a little, uh, you know, different quality of person, you know. No, I, you're, nor you're normally a better type of person. I bring you down, don't I? I bring you to a different level. Well, you know, but who am I to judge? But, you know, while you're in the gutter, can you get them whirly gigs and things out? Because I haven't had a chance to clean up there yet. Uh, the whirly gigs? Yeah, them things that come off the maple trees. Oh, I got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got it. Okay, you got a, you got a suggestion for, for Mayor? Yes, I do. My daughter. Your daughter? 19 years old. Graduated. She's uh, from college. 4.5 student. She doesn't owe anybody anything. Wow, that sounds like Okay? Good. She come in there. She is a heads-up, smart young lady. 
she knows business, she knows, she's worked with me doing, I'm a carpenter by trade, but uh, I also do other businesses, real estate and banking and this and that, and so she's had a finger in all this stuff, and then run a computer, you know, make it hum, and, you know, she doesn't owe anybody anything. She'll come in there and say, hey, this has got to be done, this has got to be done, this has got to be done. Anybody tries to grease her hand, you know, give her some money, grease her hand, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, she don't need it because she'll do a good job. She'll walk out of that place, you know, and everybody in the country will want her. So nobody, you know, she's not going to accept any crap or whatever. Was she easy on the eyes? Um, she's a beautiful young lady, yeah. So she, she sounds electable. Yes, but the point is, is that she's young knowledgeable, intelligent, she doesn't owe anybody anything, and she doesn't need anything from anybody in the future, and she will just do what is right. Does That's she how have, I taught my daughter. Does she have a boyfriend? Right. Um, well, she has a fellow that you know, interested, but... Well, probably has a lot of fellers that are interested. Well, that's true, yes. I mean, she's right in my age brackets, why I was asking. No, you know. she isn't 20. Get out of here. Well, what do you know about what my... She's legal. Well, yeah, but how old are you? 42. Yeah, well, not my daughter. Okay, well, then I'm hanging up on you. Somebody said they found a nice place where I can go and meet women my age. So what the hell do I want to do that for? All the women my age are carrying around a bunch of baggage and they're already divorced twice and got two kids and... I've decided in the future I'm never going to get married again. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find a woman who doesn't like me and give her my house. Just be done with it. Just be done with it. Scott, you're on the air. Hey, Rick. How you doing? All right. Um, I... I just turned into your show, so I don't know if this name was ever given or not, but uh, he did pretty well in the uh, governor's race up here in Cleveland. How about Tim Hagan? Tim Hagan. Well, you know, I was thinking I wasn't a big Tim Hagan fan when he was running for governor, but I'm beginning to think I'm really not much of a Bob the Jellyfish Taft fan because I don't like the idea of us being taxed more and then found money the next day and then we've still got the tax. He doesn't yeah, that's seem, true. He, he doesn't be, he's, he, he's, I think he's the puppet of King George V, George Voinovich. Oh, yeah, you're probably right. Now, here's something interesting I was thinking about in a break. Let's go from Jane Campbell backwards. How far can we go back with mayors in the city of Cleveland? Oh, God. Well, who's, who's before Campbell? You'll know that one, right? Yeah, boy, which we don't want. And how, about, uh, how about Trevor Sano? How about have him run for uh, mayor? Okay, well, which one do you want me to put down a vote for? Trevor Hagan. How about both? Yeah, there you go. All right. Thanks, Rick. All right, you're more than welcome. Now, let's see if we can go backwards. From Campbell. And correct me if I'm wrong. Five, seven, eight, eleven, hundred. Uh, Campbell, and then White, right? Then before White was Voinovich, is that right? Then before Voinovich was before Voinovich Kucinich. Then before Kucinich was Perk. And then before Perk was Stokes. And then before Stokes, I have no idea. I can I can tell you, Tom Johnson. Didn't they make a statue out of Tom Johnson, the best mayor the city of Cleveland ever had? commissioned the Von Swearingen brothers to build Terminal Tower or some such thing. I don't know. He did something important. I guess you have to do something important to get a statue made of you. At least it's a good-looking statue. A lot better than the free stamp, don't you think? Is that all that Clay's Oldenburg does? Is Klaus or whatever his name is? He designs, like, bent paper clip sculptures and free stamp sculptures and tries to bilk cities out of... Well, that will cost you $500,000. For me to design statue that's ugly, look like something from someone's desk. I mean, I could do that. You know, a crumpled up snot rag or something there, make a statue out of it. A stained coffee cup with a chip in the handle. And charge half a million dollars for it. Phil, you're on the air. Oh. Howdy. Good, this is uh, Phil from Dover. Yeah, it says up here on the big board something about a woman living in her car. Yeah, first of all, I want to suggest Mary Rose Okar for mayor. Oh, boy. <laughs> What's oh, she yeah. do? Is she, is she still in office now so I can make fun of her? 
Yeah, she is a uh, is a state representative. That's what I was thinking, state rep. You know, I, I, the only state rep that's going to be any kind of a good mayor is uh, Dean DePiro is running for mayor of Parma, I believe. Yeah, but I thought maybe I'd throw her name in there. Throw her wig in the ring? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, this, this uh, woman that's living in her car. Is this a joke? No, it's on page B3, B as in boy 3 of the Cleveland Plain Dealer today. I guess I missed that. A woman living in her car. Yeah, because uh, another couple cheated her out of money uh, that she was paying for some property and kicked her off from it. Is it a nice car? I'm not sure. I mean, because I got a pretty old house. I mean, you know, maybe I'd be better off living in a brand new car than my old house. I could buy a pretty nice car for what I paid for my house. <laughs> I just thought maybe... Uh, I mean, I sleep on the couch, so what's the difference? You know, I could just sleep, <laughs> get a nice car with a big roomy back seat and sleep there. It'd be just as comfortable. Yeah. And dogs always like going for a ride in the car, and my dog always sleeps next to me on the floor anyway, so she could just sleep on the floor mat. Yeah. Yeah, that'd work. Anyway, I'd like you to look at this article and maybe... Uh, yeah, I'll look at it in a break. I would fax it to you if I could. No, I've got the paper here. I'll just look at it in a break. I just missed it. Okay. Oh, that, you made a uh, something about uh, in the old days... Politicians used to stay bought. Judges used to stay bought. Yeah, when you bought it. Came a, from a uh, movie called Used Cars. I know that. That's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, me too. I have a copy of that, and I watch it every once in a while. You know, it's funny when I was married, and maybe there's the uh, the part about why you don't want to marry somebody that's 20 years your junior. She didn't think that movie was funny. Didn't laugh once. That was the funniest movie. It was hilarious. I mean, it was absolutely. And in fact, you know what's funny is uh, the judge was Grandpa Monster Al Lewis. Yeah. He's still alive. Is that right? He's got to be like 95. I mean, I'm serious. He's got to be like 95 years old. <laughs> I mean, he's 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 up there. Great movie. Maybe we should put him on the short list with Eddie Albert, who's going to be the next celebrity to kick the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> well, who's left? I mean, they're, they're, well, I suppose both the Marylands are left, and, and Butch Patrick's left, and Yvonne DiCarlo is still left. And then it's funny that, you know, if you looked at the cast of characters on there, you would have thought the first well, one... Then, what was the name of the guy? I mean, I can't think of the name of the guy, the main character in there. The... Herman Munster? No. What, do you mean his real name? No, no, the... Um, the yeah, the act... Oh, you mean in used cars? Yeah. Uh, uh, it was uh, Russo. His name was Kurt Russell. Yeah. He played Rudy was, Ru Rudy Russo running I, for I, Senate. He was a child a childhood actor, uh, but this was one of his first uh, movies as he after he became an adult, I think. Yeah, I think it was about 1980 that movie came out. Yeah. 80 or 81. Garrett Graham's in it. Jack Warden's great. He's he's in it as two parts, Luke Fuchs and Roy L. Fuchs, and yeah, uh, he played the two brothers. Yeah. I mean, if anybody hasn't seen used cars, I mean, and if you like cars at all, or even if you don't like cars at all, go out and rent it. It's hilarious. And Jim, and he had to turn the, I can't even repeat half the lines in the movie because it's really raunchy. And they, they break in on the president's television uh, broadcast. Oh, yeah, with Carter's giving a Carter's speech. giving a speech. They, or they broke in on, what was the other one they broke? Only Lenny and Squiggy are in it. Yeah. Not as Lenny and Squiggy, but he's, if I can build and install a pacemaker in this man's chest for parts from Radio Shack for $12, <laughs> yes, I can break in on the president. I know. The line about the nuns protesting in front of the... I can't, I can't repeat the lines, but they're... You know, I, I'm going to go home tonight and watch that movie again. <laughs> you, got me, you got me almost in tears just thinking about it. There's another one that's equal to that. It's called Hollywood Nights. Hollywood Nights is great. You know, you know about that one, too? Absolutely. Me and Carmen Angelo walk around the newsroom quoting, It's impossible! Remember Sasha Dubinsky, the wonderful one-armed violinist? How about, he, how about spiking the punch? Yeah, that's good, though. It has a bit of a wang to it. <laughs> Can I have some more? <laughs> I just drive through the nice hibiscus we're putting in the New Bomb Turk Memorial Library. <laughs> Yeah, if anybody hasn't seen Hollywood Nights Rent, what that's a raunchy version of American Graffiti, basically. Heavens, heavens. Yeah, yeah, great movie. All right, well, thanks for uh, all the memories. Thanks, Rick. All right, bye-bye. I have to check out the lady living in her car. Isn't that funny how radio does that? We just, we, we go from mayoral candidates to a lady living in her car to used cars to movie to, gee, does that mean I should talk about something else right now? Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm going to talk about right now. Speaking of cars. Win up Ford F-150 Super Crew Lariat. You, you don't have to really, you don't have to do anything. You just have to listen to this station. Win one of those 111 keys. Claiborne and Ford and WTAM, we got this tailgate party truck giveaway going. Listen starting tomorrow for your chance to win one of 111 keys. They're going to be giving away ignition keys. Only one of them starts the truck.
on September 12th on Wells and Coleman in the morning to find out when you could be driving home in a Ford F-150. Beautiful F-150 loaded. And it's the number one selling vehicle in the world for 21 years. You own it. It ain't a lease. You don't have to give it back or nothing. It's yours. Courtesy of Cleveland Ford and the big one, News Radio, WTAM 1100. Triple map to forecast from TV3 meteorologist Betsy Kling. Tonight, cloudy. South of Cleveland, you will have some rain. Low in the low 60s. Tomorrow, sunny. Possible afternoon thunderstorm. Mostly south of Cleveland with a high of 80. Tuesday, the same as tomorrow. Currently 73 degrees in Cleveland. 73. They keep talking about, oh, it's going to rain. Chance of rain. Where I live, there hasn't been a raindrop in days and days and days and did nothing. I went out. I even washed my car. Just as well because the guy behind me, he bought the property, and there's weeds that are taller than my head. He's let the weeds grow in the backyard, and they're like seven or eight foot tall weeds, and I guess he'll get around to it. I have no weeds in my yard at all. I have no yard at all. That's why I have no weeds at all, I guess. Dave, you're on the air. How are you doing? All right. Hey, I think you're starting at the wrong end of this uh, state. I think we need a Terminator for Columbus. I think the first guy that's got to go is uh, Governor Rhino Tax. Well, you know, I don't think you'd be the first person to think that because it doesn't seem to me that... Uh, I mean, I started to wonder about those bicentennial bells that we were spending money on for all 88 counties, and I thought, I thought we're hurting for money, and I thought we have a rainy day fund, and it's raining... So why don't we dip into the fund? But no, there's the penny tax. Which well, they're, is, they're, driving, uh, they're driving business uh, into the ground. You know, businesses, there are businesses that are just going to go bankrupt over all this. You know what we need? Increase in tax. Every time you turn around, there's another tax. Yep, well, here's what we need. I think we need a governor with some common sense that, say, that would say, I want to bring casino gambling to the state of Ohio. If I got, we... I got a, a, an idea for a, a good candidate, a good, solid candidate. I don't know about uh, gambling in the state, but it would be John Kasich. I know the name. Well, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's been uh, in Washington, and he's... Uh, He's also been on uh, Fox uh, Fair and Balanced and uh, Saturday Nights, I think. Now, what, what, uh, would be, what, what would be wrong with casino gambling? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think what they got to do is cut their budgets. They don't need any more people, uh, or slothful people at that, uh, working for the state of Ohio. They need to cut the workforce, cut the budgets, just like everybody else has to do. All right, there you go. I still think, what do you think? Casino gambling. We could turn the flats into a playground instead of a wholesale ecstasy outlet, which is what it is now. The people with any kind of money at all that want to go out on the weekends, they're not going to the flats anymore. The flats is for where 21-year-olds go to vomit. Do their William Green impression. I didn't see any vomiting last night. Did I miss anything? Was there vomiting on the, uh, during the game last night? Did I miss that? I saw some hyperventilating, but no technicolor yawning. I think if we took the flats and turned it into a playground for gamblers, we could turn around a lot of area that's not being used for anything. Half the flats looks blighted. Have you noticed? You driven through there lately? Drive down West 3rd? Take a look around. Even if you do have a business down there, you'd probably be more than happy to get the hell out. Come up with a nice big chunk of land, have a nice casino there. Do you leave the state to pull the lever? Do you leave the state? Do you go to Greektown? Do you drive to Windsor? Do you fly to Vegas? They want to have a convention center in Cleveland. For what? Nobody wants to come here for a convention. There's nothing to do here. They want to go to New Orleans. They want to go to Houston or Dallas or Chicago or New York or Vegas. I'd rather go to Phoenix than go here. Who wants to come here? There's no reason to come here. What, do you want to see the Rock Hall? Is, this, is Cleveland a vacation spot? I, if it is, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I understand maybe it's, it's the big city. If you live in New California, which for those of you, of you who don't know, is it's down by Marysville. It, you know, the, stop, the, the, the whole town consists of a stoplight. There's a little building, I don't know what it does, and there's a stoplight. Welcome to New California, leaving New California. Gee, that was quick. I didn't even get a chance to stop for a postcard. I don't think they have postcards in there. Maybe they do, and it's a picture of a stoplight. That's all it is. You just drive in and drive right out. Dalton. 
Uh, what's up, Gilly Moore? <laughs> Where you been? I haven't heard that. I haven't seen that name on the big board in a long time. I was going to ask you how married life was going, but... Uh, uh, oh, just, just great now. Judging from what I heard earlier, I guess not so good. Uh, actually, it's, like I say, just great now. <clears throat> but uh, I w you brought up a fantastic topic about uh, the recall in California concerning Gray Davis. Well, I brought it up. Of course it's a fantastic topic. Yeah. Yeah. But it leads to a, a bigger... Uh, is it, doesn't it seem like there's just a louder, larger uh, politics all around us? Yeah, it, I mean, anything from, you know, the tax on the tattoo artists and the manicures to California to the Texas walkout, you know? Yeah, it seems... The filibusters in the Senate. Yep, you know? yep, more and more politics. But it seems like everybody's a chattering classes now, and you, on this, you know, this radio station, it, it's uh, just a f outstanding show tonight. Well, it's usually a pretty outstanding show. I'm, I'm popular with the kids, you know. Yeah, what's your grudge against 21-year-olds that throw up in the flats now? Come on. Why, are you 21? Oh, hell no, but uh, I'm sure we both were, so come on. Well, yeah, but I, I used to go down to the flats and do constructive things like drag race on Quigley and Scranton. I never went down there just to hang out in the, the gyp joints and whatnot and pay $10 to park. The best thing about the flats is right where you pull in to park there is that guy that sells the Yiddos. That's the best part of the flats is when you're leaving and you're all sloppy and you had too much beer, you stop and get a Yiddo. Then you sit on the trunk of your car if it's nice out because it's going to spill all over the place and you don't want to get it in your lap. Yeah. That's the best part about the flats, you know? It's like cotton candy or something, you know? It's, <laughs> for those who like birch beer, you know, go to the state fair. For those who like Yiddos, go down the flats. I'm going to ask you one question. I hope it's not too personal, but uh, how long did that marriage last? Uh, about 10 months. Really? Yeah, yeah. Didn't heed my advice last time I called then, did you? What advice was that? When I told you not to get married till you were old and worthless. Oh, well, you know what? The problem I'm divorced, I think, is that I'm young and worthless, or middle-aged <laughs> and worthless. If there were more money, I think she probably would have stayed and waited until the 10 years from now to cheat on me. Well, that wasn't my advice, you know, but... No, well, I'm not getting married again. A friend of mine gave me some advice. He said, Rick... Uh, I'll clean it up. Uh, date them, don't marry them. That's true. He says, if you like girls that are 22 years old, date them. I'm cleaning it up, <laughs> but don't marry them. Well, you know, there's been many a woman that's, uh, you know, put a man under the bridge. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, like I said, the next time I'm just going to find me a woman that hates me and give her my house. Hey, what's up, uh, um... You hear that music? You're that... having a little love fest with all your old callers. What's up? Well, uh, I'll tell you, 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 when they hear that music, that means I'm going away. So oh. You, you want to hold on? Nah. Okay. Later. All right. Now, I gave you the option. I guess he was calling from Lorraine. It was long distance or something like that. Did he say I was having a love fest with my old callers? Oh, that's adorable. And then we need to hear from Sean L., too. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man. In fact, I called that number he gave me. I said, give him a call. Sometime I called and some woman answered. I said, is Sean L. there? She said, Who? Probably not his real name. I'm Rick Kilmore, the thinking man's friend. More of the program after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. The following material may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Government do take a bite, don't you? Yeah, I guess government do. I'm talking a little bit about, uh, well, you know, if they can have Schwarzenegger in California as governor, maybe we could recall our governor. We'll recall our mayor. Got to come up with some celebs. We got a pretty crappy list so far. Big voice man. Who am I and who are we? The Rick Kilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. Well, I mean, it's all right, but you know, there's a there's a lot of uh, people out there. I mean, you got Drew Carey and that kind of thing. Butch Davis. Some guy called and said his daughter, but then he wouldn't hook me up. I'm taking her off the list. Sorry, Joe. Your daughter has to be able to date members of the local media. Or she's unelectable in my book. You want that support of the media? 19-year-old girls. She's a woman. She's a woman. 19. That's legal. Right? Tim Hagen. Triv. Somebody thought Triv would be a good mayor of Cleveland. I would really prefer a cup of cocoa. And Mary Rose O'Carr. Okay, there's more celebrities in Cleveland than that. 
How about Dick Goddard? The grand old man of Cleveland weather. And, you know, he forgets to do things on his computer. He could you know, forget where the money went. I don't know. Something like that. Or Denise Dufava. Would you vote for her? I like those commercials for the news she's on. The guy says, Cleveland's a happening town. Something going on 24 hours a day. What the hell Cleveland are you living in? I'm living in the one where the Hot Dog Inn closes up now. They were open on Christmas. There ain't nothing going on in Cleveland in the middle of the night. Drug deals and homicides. That's it. So there's nothing else going on in Cleveland. Taxi rides. Another question. What the hell's going on in Cleveland in the middle of the night? Nothing that I can think of. You see taxis. You see turbines behind the wheel. Batteries to power. Turbines to speed. It's like Batman. Pull start that baby and get out on the highway. Lock yourself into the high-speed lane just like they do in Baghdad and do 55. Or wherever the heck you're from. New Delhi and do 55 in the fast lane. What's that? What's this? Get the hell out of the hammer lane. These foreigners cause more problems like that truck driver that pulled off to the fast lane because he thought that many was off the road and some lady plowed under him a few months ago. Took her Crown Vic and turned it into shredded wheat with her included. Actually rolled a Crown Victoria as it went right past the ICC check bumper at 65 mile an hour and twisted and turned itself as it headed towards, I guess maybe the trailer was empty, and so the Crown Victoria was headed towards the front of the truck to try and find out if it could find any work, because it didn't have anything to do. I don't know. Twisted logic of some sort. No more twisted than my idea of having the hamburger helper helping hand and the Arby's oven mitt have a steel cage, thumb rustling death match, winner eats all, and gets a golden glove. Joe, you're on the air. You're the gill. Oh, hey, Joe. What's up, homie? Well, you know, when you call, they should put Mini Figgy Joe up there, and that way I'd know it's you. Right on. Hey, Gil, you know what, man? When I, when I get my, my convertible, 64 rolling again, I'm going to come get you, man. We're going to roll together. Lincoln? Right on. Well, it sounds good to me. Right. I like 64 Lincoln convertibles. That's the bad. When I get it rolling again, man, I'm going to call and leave you on a uh, call the show, man, and uh, at your office and leave on your answer machine or something, man. We can get together. What's wrong with it now? Um, I'm, I got in the shop, man. Got my took my gas tank off, got it redid, got my sending unit rebuilt. You know, just just getting it, just getting everything ready to to, to cruise in. Now that's a good question because I've got an old car and the gas gauge doesn't work, and now I found out the tank's starting to leak. And did you take it to some place in Cleveland? Can I, can, will we tell you where I took it to? I guess. It's not like it's a plug. I just want to know. Okay. I took my, my gas tank up to a uh, Palmer radiator. All right. They, um, they, they renewed it. You know, took it, took it apart. And I guess uh, sandblasted all the rust and stuff out of it. And then I took my sending unit to uh, John Wolf out in Willoughby. And he rebuilt my sending unit for me. Are these, and, um, okay, are these people in the phone book or something? I mean, I know part yeah. of the radiator is. Well, well, the, I don't want to go all the way to Willoughby to get my sending unit fixed. I'd rather UPS it out there. Um, See, I don't know if it's a sending unit. All I know is the gas gauge never moves. It always says E, and that's that. Well, the, more than likely, well, the, with mine, it was my sending unit. And I was looking in, um, in um, the, the Hennings book, Yeah, yeah. and I found him in the Hennings book, and I called him up. And it was like maybe a 15 ride, 15 minute ride from downtown Cleveland. I found it with no problem. And what's what would that, what what does something like that cost? He charged me ninety dollars. And what did it cost you to get the tank redone? The tank, I gotta go pick that up. I believe that's two twenty five. Okay, because I mean I was just debating. I thought, do I buy a new gas tank or do I get mine fixed? You know, you know, I found a, a, a salvage yard in Oklahoma that had my gas tank and my sitting unit for one fifty. One fifty. What was a deal? But they refused to send me the gas tank because of. Uh, gas vapors. <laughs> they wanted me to drive to Oklahoma and get oh, it. Well, you're not going to do that. <laughs> what you'd need to do is if you knew somebody that was a trucker, if they were coming back, you know, if they were making a West Coast turnaround yeah. and grab it on the way back, you could do that. But, well, I, got uh, a, I got a friend who lives in Oklahoma, man, but he is a truck driver, but I can't get with that sucker. I don't know where he ain't in the phone book or nothing. But you know, Gil, when I listen to you, man, there's a lot of topics that, that just hit me. It just hit my head, man, but I had called about this California thing as a governor. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
California is a couple of billion dollars in the red because I believe a lot of this got to do with this Enron thing. The guy, and, and the, to my um, knowledge, the executor of Enron, have you ever been charged for how he um, deal, dealt with, with California? You know, I, to tell you to tell you the truth, I haven't really kept up on Enron and what's going on out there. And maybe I should have. I don't know. It just seems to me that there's yeah. You hear something once every three weeks about some problem in California. I mean, we've been hearing more about California in the past six months or yeah. a year than than I care to hear about. And see that the, the problem they had was an electrical problem, and they went and the cut. That's how they 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 got in the debt and found out that the the executive was one of either Bush. One of his dealings, or with his father's dealings, or with the vice president, he was dealing with the executive, but he's never gone. I think, man, he, he's somewhere spending, they, boy, they, they, they milked a mess out of California. But I think that's all that mess at, and, and Arnold, he's good with acting, man, but ask him any questions of politics, and you're going to get trouble. The man don't know nothing, the man don't know nothing about politics. They're just going by just because he's an actor. Absolutely. I mean, but you look at some of the other people, I mean, you look at Sonny Bono, and uh, uh, Fred Grandy, wasn't he a gopher from the Love Boat? Uh, mm -hmm. And and uh, Ronald Reagan? And uh, Clint Eastwood? Now, why did he become mayor of Carmel by the Sea? Uh, because he was Clint Eastwood. You're right. I mean, I don't think he had any qualifications. Yeah. Hey, now, listen to this. Though. You were talking about a mayor for Cleveland, correct? Yeah. I got somebody in mind. Right, and I think uh, when he was with, with Dennis Kucinich, when he was mayor, man, Dennis Kucinich was good. The Muni light. Puny Muni. <laughs> what happened was, you know, the, the, the politicians, the, the, the banks want him to sell Muni light. He refused to, and that's why we Cleveland still got Muni light now, because Dennis Kucinich, he refused to bend under under pressure that all those people were trying to put on him. Well, you know, he was a bit wacky, though. I mean, if it wasn't for Bob Wiseman, he wouldn't have any idea what to say. He always had to have somebody whispering in his ear. Otherwise, well, he wanted to meditate or I don't know what, you well, know. I, and they'd turn the lights down in meetings and everyone would sit around on the floor before they'd have... <laughs> I, I heard this from an insider. Yeah, I, I think now he got enough experience, man. He, Because uh, what they're trying to do now, man, with that, with that what, the, the convocation center... Trying to build a new one? No, convention no, center. Sorry, convention center. We got an IX center sitting out there doing nothing most of the yeah, time. There you go. And and, and I'm telling you, the, the what they're talking about, man, they can't put no money into the airport because of uh, the economy. They're going to have the IX center for a long time. Well, what about all them people that lost their houses and they were going to tear them down for airport expansion and they're still sitting there? That's cold. <laughs> they, they made plans to move and now they've been deep, man. They got to stay. They done, they done into a lot of money. That's that's cool. Hey, can I, let me ask you a question. All right, real quick. I'm getting up on a break. Okay, you got, um, who, who, now... I, Unless you want to hold. You want to hold that thought? I'll hold. All right, hang on to that thought there, Tiger. I'll get back to you, Minnie Figgy Joe. And uh, I'm interested in some of the other callers as well. I'm interested in all of you. I love this one up here that says, uh, wonder why I'd want to marry a woman 20 years younger. Wait, he's calling from Lakewood. Maybe that's why he doesn't know. I mean, I don't know. I'm just taking a wild guess here. More of the programming after these important words on the big one. Mike Trubisano. Even though I really want to have a cigarette right now, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself. Mike Trubisano. Weekday afternoons at 3. I love myself. He's getting horny. I think it's working. News Radio WTAM 1100. Rick Gilmore. I'm the kind of guy that used to heat up, I take a pair of pliers and heat up a quarter and throw it to a homeless person. That's funny. Now that is funny. On News Radio WTAM 1100. Yeah. I love it old party on the patio. Yeah. Well, I, I did do that once in my misspent youth. We're at the Open Pantry on Detroit, down by about, I don't know what it is, 58th in Detroit or something like that. And there was this old bum. He was walking around, this old bum, and, uh, he was begging for change, and I took my Zippo and took a pair of pliers and hit it up a quarter and tossed it to him, and he picked it up and went, ow, 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 ow. And it went from hand to hand to hand, and, uh, you know, it, it, <laughs> he, he finally got cool enough that he could pick the thing up and, and keep it, you know, hang on to it that way. That was back when we used to sing the, the silly, uh, we had the, uh, open, the open panty song. 
They're open every night, all the way till midnight. They're not far from your car. Open panties, pull them down, pull them down. Pull them. <laughs> Remember that song, Joe? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what you say? <laughs> you want to do the weather with me? Go ahead, what's the weather? Well, from TV3 meteorologist Betsy Kling, your triple Doppler forecast tonight. Some storms possible south of Cleveland, low in the low 60s. Tomorrow, sunny and some afternoon showers south of Cleveland again. High of 80, currently 73 degrees in Cleveland, 73. And uh, check out our cyber vote at WTAM.com, would you? Here's the question. Where do you think the Browns will finish in the AFC Central? Third. Third? That's what I was going to vote. I'm going to third. I'm voting right now. And now we'll wait for it to refresh, and then I'll tell you what the results are. Oh, yeah. you already... Wow, look at this. Ed already has the results printed out. What was it? 38% say fourth. 19% <laughs> say third, and then 22% each say first or second. Yeah, it all depends on what quarterback they put in. Well, yeah, at least talk him and throw the ball. Yeah, he, he was on, he kept him in longer. He was on a groove. Yeah, I know. I mean, well, and the problem is, is that the receivers have butter on their fingers. Yeah. That's that's a problem. You ain't never lying. Oh, you know, I, I was I was watching. I'm going come on already, you know. Yeah, that's messed up. Enough to make you drink beer. <laughs> hey, Gil, let me ask you, you. You got this call from Lakewood, man, but I was calling you about this 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 the. the the, the priest who is gay. Yeah, yeah, oh, right. yeah. Now, Father Father Robinson or Bishop Robinson now. Now my thing is, man, I want to know. Now I'm a man. I got hair on my chest. I'm a man. You know, I would like to know, man, from a gay person. Now I know what it is turns me on about a woman. I love women. You understand? But I want to know, man, what is it about a man? that turns another man on. I don't know if we want to get down that road, do well, we? No, you, you know what? See, that's the, the, that's the whole thing. Everybody's scared to ask the question. Now, this priest, my thing is, man, everybody hollering about my dog Clinton getting his Peter kissed in the White House. Now, everybody's so much on this, and, 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 and what they're about to do is let this priest be the head, whatever, in the church, and everybody just scared, you're scared to talk about the, this priest and this guy. I would like to know. I wonder, yeah, he'll, he'll become someday, he'll be the head bishop. Um, yeah, what... This, this, uh, this guy's from, 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 from Lakewood. I, you know what I'm saying? Well, I gotta get... I gotta, you put uh, me on hold, because uh, I would like to know if he knows some gay people or if he's gay yourself, all if right. I can ask him some questions. All right, I'll do... Uh, first and I ain't trying to get degrading. I ain't gonna get degrading with him. Yeah, I know. Hang on here, because I, right. I, I... Hold on, I'm gonna get to Troy. You're on the air. What's up, Gilly? Hey, Troy. How Tremont. Doing, buddy? Tremont, Troy. Yeah, you still live around here or what? Of course I do. Okay, I haven't seen you in a while. I've been looking for you. Well, you're looking in the wrong spots, I guess. Yeah, I'm not gay, by the way. No, no, I, you're not gay, no. Oh, no. 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 Now, there are some people. like women. There are some people in Tremont that are gay. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking probably, too, because it's kind of artsy-fartsy there, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what happens. Yeah, well, do you sure that you get the artist types and the next thing you know, hmm, hmm, hmm. Hey, the question I have for you, though, if you need your car worked on, you have to get the best backyard mechanic you know, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I know... Scotty is waiting for you, my friend. Who? Scotty. Scotty? Scotty will work on your car. Where does he live? He lives right down the street from you. Okay, well, I'll see... Um, all right, because... Now, I'm talking about... I got an old car, and... Oh, that's his best... That's his best forte. No, uh, does he? I mean, I'm. I, did Forte sound gay? Uh, well, it's proper. It's proper. I think oh, it's okay. from. It's but from. Forte it, didn't sound gay, did it? It's from the French for area you're strong in. Oh, okay, that's good. You Thank know, one you of my very much for helping me out with that. You know, one of my favorite uh, French words is je ne sais quoi. What does that mean? I don't know what I like about it, but there's just a certain something about that you know word I mean? that I can't put my finger on. It's, it's got a certain. It's got that word's got a certain something. You mean get drunk a lot. Is that what I mean? Uh, well, actually, it was this girl named Jen Osequa. Uh, she was uh, Irish French. I used to date her back in sixth grade, but uh, oh, okay. we'll, we'll not go better there. Then. Yeah, we'll that's not go there. Then. You're all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm an okay guy. No, I'm thinking about that, and, and that's not a gay thing. I don't mean that in a gay way. Not in a gay way, no. No, no, not in a straight gay way. Straight way, right down the highway. Yeah, well, is the straight really a straight thing? I think maybe it, they should be gays and forwards. <laughs> Because remember that you'd, you'd pull up to an intersection when you were riding around smoking weed and drinking a do you know drinking That's beer. Right. And they'd say somebody go go straight. You'd say never straight forward. Then gay used to mean just happy. Yeah, it sure did. How about yeah. how about the Enola gay? Remember that dropped right, the bomb. Right. What was that? Well, it was named after the Captain Tibbets' mother. Her name was Enola Gay Tibbets. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know history. My dog's barking. Oh, what's, and your, what's your dog's name? Sparky. 
Sparky? Sparky. Oh, Sparky. He's not gay. Well, maybe you should. I had a gay rat. <laughs> I had a girl rat and a boy rat, and the boy rat wanted nothing. All he did was lay in the corner of the cage and lick himself. He didn't, he didn't he want anything. He licked himself. Is he gay? I, he was gay because he wouldn't, he wouldn't mate with the female rat, and uh, they ended up dying, so I... Uh, what did he die of, AIDS? <laughs> He was alone all the time. My car died of AIDS. I, who? My car. Your car died Ames. of AIDS? Ames. Huh? Ames. Of what? Ames. Ames? Yeah. Wouldn't pass the heat check? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> your car, my car died. died of AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Was, was my car gay? Uh, I don't know. He probably took it up the jailpipe once or twice. Another infected muffler. Uh, well, anyway, so... <laughs> Do you, do you have an idea for if we recalled Ladybug Jane Campbell, the queen of the flying hubcap, and we're going to put somebody else in as mayor of the city of Cleveland, who would it be? Ooh. We got Drew rough. Carey, Butch Davis, Tim Hagen, Mike Trevisano. We have no midgets. No midgets? We have no midgets. What, isn't there a midget in, in California? A midget uh, mayor? No, no one's running for mayor. Well, I, one out of 200. Oh, one of the, the running for governor. Oh, governor. That's I wonder if he's on the, is he on the short list? Yeah, okay. yeah, on the short list. Yeah. Right, well, if I was on the short list, it would be for some other reason than no. not for my height. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I think I'm moving on. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, one thing I should tell you, though, yeah. is you should address horse racing a little more. Horse racing? Yeah, horse racing. I'll get Jim from Window 4 at Thistledown. We'll get him on the air. Oh, that's what you need to do. All right. All right, buddy. Talk love you. you. All right. Love bye. you back. All right. And that's not a gay way. No, not a gay thing. Oh, okay. No. Okay. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. Real quick, I want to go back and lock in Mini Figgy Joe and go to Mike from Lakewood. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Mike? You're not gay, are you? No, not at all. Now, I think you misunderstood what I was saying. Okay. Oh, yeah, but you wanted to know why I wanted a woman 20 years younger. No, not at all. I just want to know what happened with the marriage because I'm involved with somebody 20 years younger than me. And, I'm, you know, people are just saying, you know, it's hopeless and the age difference is too much to overcome. And I'm just wondering, you know, not you going into specifics or whatever, but if you feel that, you know. I don't think, just I, do not, years, I don't think the age had anything to do with it because she's dating a guy now that's older than I am. Okay, great. Well, then. You know, I guess that answers my I, I think sometimes question. women in their 20s sometimes have low self-esteem and that sort of thing. You know, they don't have their head on straight yet, you know? The, the, the not, right. not until maybe they're 30, something like that. That help you out? Yeah, yeah. So I guess, you know, you figure you got to wait like 10 years or whatever because she might think you're the one, but then, you know, she's going to think, hey, I'm, you know, 22, 23. Yeah, there's so much more out there, and then they get ready to settle down like in another seven years or so. so. You're right. All right. Okay. All right. And Joe, i got to cut you loose. Uh, uh, hello? Yeah. Hey, when you ever have a topic going, man, about that, I'm going to call it. And please, let me talk to somebody gay. Because I would like to know, what is it about another man? You, you know what I'm saying? Joe, I'll find out. Yeah, because I can't imagine another, another, another man biting another man on the buttocks. You understand? Yeah. But, hey, hey. Joe, I got to go. Okay, your car, your old car. Yeah. It's a Paul's Auto Shop in Oakwood. He deals with old cars and an excellent mechanic. And Joe, a I, all right, all right, I got to go. Right on. All right. Yeah, I tried telling him nicely. When you hear the music, that means it's time to hear important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on Cleveland's only news radio, WTIM 1100. Yep. Rick Gilmore. You poked the thing through or you didn't poke the thing through, okay? Pokey. On News Radio WTAM 1100. Yeah, if we ever do a program about why gay men are attracted to other gay men, we'll have to get a hold of Hanging Chad. Hanging Chad and Dimpled Chad can call from Florida. I don't know why uh, Tremont Troy brought that up. Why two men are attracted to each other. I've, I've asked that question before. I said, I'm a man, and I know how bad a man can smell. I don't mean another man, I mean me. So why you'd be a stinky guy and want to wake up with another stinky guy... I mean, if you could go into that, if you're gay, 5781100 in the classic 216 area code. Without being too graphic, I don't need to hear about prostate glands or anything, you know, I just, I don't know. I mean, when a man kisses another man, is it just like kissing another woman, except that there's hair, more hair on her face? Is it like kissing, you know, an Italian woman? Or, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't get it. We weren't even talking about that.
We were talking about if we recall the mayor of the city of Cleveland, and I'm not suggesting we do, but just like they're recalling Gray Davis, governor of California, they got almost 200 people on the list now, including Larry Flint. I want to be the smut peddler with a heart. Just because I'm a pornographer doesn't mean I wouldn't make a good governor. And they got Arnold Schwarzenegger running. They got all kinds of people running out there. If you were a Californian, a frontier state, would you vote for Arnold, the candidator? Would you vote for him? Is that the reason just enough to vote for him? I mean, they said he'd win tomorrow if the election were held, just because I guess they don't care if he has any political savvy whatsoever. Just because he's Arnold, he can fix the problem. Now remember, he was also in Kindergarten Cop. And he was also in Hercules in New York. He couldn't even speak the language in 1970. I don't know. I don't know. What does it all mean? Hoyle and Lorraine, you're on the air. Hey, Gilly, love your show. Thank you. You know what's funny? I always keep hearing, like, secondhand from people that, uh, like my friend Mike told me, uh, he says, you know, Danny Coghlan and, Je and Jeff Phelps were in, and they both said they think you're the best guy on the radio in Cleveland. I said, well, why don't they ever call up? They can call here if they're listening, you know, call and sing praises on the air if they want to. Well, Gilly, I'm going to tell you something. You know, I travel about 35, 40,000 miles a summer just doing old car shows for Volkswagen. Oh, okay. you, so you work for Volkswagen? No, no, no. Oh. I work for Ford Motor Company. Oh, all right. But I'm in the old Volkswagens, pre-75, uh, Bugs, buses, and things like that. And you truly are the beacon of my life in the summer. On a fog-shrouded summer evening. Buddy, I'm going to tell you what. When I'm in Connecticut, when I'm in Florida, when I'm in Canada, when I'm in Missouri... The first thing I dial into is Gilly on a Sunday, because I'm coming home from car shows. My first car was a 60 Beetle. Well, everybody owned a bug. Everybody owned a bus. Everybody consummated a relationship, a love affair, or a child in a Volkswagen. And that's my cup of tea, and it's been that way for about 30 years. Yeah, I go back to the old days where people put batteries in on a bug and, and they wouldn't buy the right battery and they'd get a friend in the back seat and he'd short out the battery against the seat springs because they didn't get the one with the little plastic cover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? That still goes on for the novice. I used to rebuild floors and I'd take conduit and pipe bend it and put it in and bolt down sheet metal to the outer rocker panel area. And sure. I, I knew how to fix them. Th I, I used to buy them for $50, $100. And... You know, you'd drive them until you got sick of driving them um, one in the wintertime and using using a, a, a an old credit card to scrape the windshield on the inside. Yep. And nowadays, that same $50 car you buy costs you ten grand. You know, I threw out, what were they, Stuart Warner gas heaters? Oh, yeah, the gas heaters, sure. I threw them out. Sure. And, I mean, what, are they worth something now, even if they well, need... today, if they're ready to go, they're $500 a piece. What if they need work? 250 Jesus criminy. Yeah. So if I can... If I've got these things where I store all my stuff and I can find some of these gas heaters... Well, you know, I, matter of fact, I just got back from a, a big show where there was over 500 show cars in Columbus yesterday. And uh, those heaters were going for, I mean, junk heaters. I mean, pure junk were 150 to $200. Well, I'm going to go tomorrow and see if I can... I mean, I had three or four of these things. That would come in handy to have a grand laying around. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You put them on eBay. Right. Go to the bank. Wow. Go to the bank. You know, it's funny because I've got a like I've got a, a '61 Corvair hood and then door. I've got a Beetle front fender. And I mean, I've got you know stuff I just saved, and that's the place to get rid of it, huh? eBay. Well, what do I do about shipping it to somebody though? Do I make them come pick it up? No, no. What you do is uh, once they pay you the money, you take it to UPS or at FedEx or take it to the uh, uh, U U.S. Post Office, wrap it up, uh, you know, put a little foam on it or whatever you have to do, and ship it to them. Then they pay the shipping. Yes, sir. And d d does the post office box it for you? Well, it depends. It depends on what the item is. A lot of things, usually what you have to do, you have to pre-wrap it. You have to put the foam on it. You have to put the bubble wrap on it, whatever it needs. Okay. Or you can, t I mean, if you have a real big ticket item, which I've shipped engines for, for uh, Volkswagen engines, and uh, I've uh, uh, boxed them up, you know, with, uh, with uh, uh, lumber. I actually just, you know, nail them together. I got you. Out to the coast and that. And I've had stuff that I've shipped to Japan, you know. I still own a Subaru 360. 
Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I was going to say, you know anybody wants to buy it? <laughs> no, you know, that's the kind of thing you just beg somebody to steal and make sure you had insurance on it. Well, I think the windshield's worth 300 bucks. That's, you know, they become worth more in parts than they are as a vehicle if they were just, you know. But Absolutely. I also had something you'd probably find interesting. A 64 NSU Wankel Spider. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, what, what's something like that worth? It ain't been on the road in years. And, you know, the motor's apart because the motor was... Uh, the motors went bad at 10,000 miles and them things. You leave it just the way it is, and you put it on eBay. And you describe it like you describe it. It's got 12,000 miles on it, and it's been in a garage for 30-some years. Someone will bid on it and, and come to your door and pick it up and be as happy as a sissy in boys town with his pants on backwards. <laughs> I don't know... <laughs> I, you know, I talked to somebody, I says, you know, when I fill in for Wells and Coleman, I says, I don't take phone calls because, I says, I, I attract a different crowd than Bill Wells no, does. I tell you, Gilly, you're the best, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, I listen to shows from, from Oklahoma City to, to the upper parts of Canada to all the way down to Cuba. I picked up shows, and truly, you are the best. I mean, I'm not blowing smoke, and I'm only saying for one reason, because you are. All right, if you were blowing smoke, you you'd need new apex seals or something. No, yeah. no. Hey, uh, you know, uh, you were talking earlier about the, uh, uh, the uh, movie Used Cars. Yeah. Now, did you guys get around to, to find out who the director was? I believe it was Robert Zemeckis. No, it was Steven Spielberg. No, nah, might he might have produced it, but it Take was... It to the bank. I, 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 I've watched it a hundred times. I got laid four or five times just watching that movie because I was in the car business, and I used to have the young little Philly uh, uh, car salesman, and I said, this is a movie you got to watch, and bing, bing, bing. Well, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I bet you I bet you money it's Robert Zemeckis. No, he was, he was the producer. Are Spielberg you? was a director. Five, seven, eight, eleven hundred. Somebody out there's got to have a Leonard Malton movie book, and they can look it up. Yeah. I've got one at home, but I don't have it with me. Now, one other thing, uh, Gilly, and uh, I'm going to let you go to your other callers. You know, you were talking earlier, someone was talking about uh, uh, gay animals or gay pets. No, I had a gay rat. Well, you know, I had a gay bear. Oh, you had a pet bear? Pet bear. And he laid his paw on the table one time, and after that, I had to get rid of him. Oh, I, I got you. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, Hoyle, thanks. All right, buddy. All right, bye-bye. Hey. Hank? Yeah? I was just debating. I see another phone caller that's called earlier. Now, uh, I was almost going to... Now, you know, I generally do not take the same caller two times in one evening. Oh, uh, I haven't talked to you. Uh, not you. It's another caller. Oh, oh okay. I was just looking okay. at the big board. And, uh, oh, I see. I mean, it's probably an interesting call, but he's already called once. Oh, well, that's unfair. Well, you haven't called before. No, no I've never called before. You never, ever? Never. I, I, I listen, but I've never called. Well, welcome to the program. Yeah, nice to be here. Yeah. <laughs> First thing, um, we'll start at home. i got a couple things I want to talk about. We'll go with uh, the Browns. Okay. Uh, how long has uh, Holcomb been in the NFL? I, I think he's been around a while. Well, he was cut by a couple of teams, wasn't he? Exactly. So he's been around uh, at least twice as long as Couch, right? He's, yeah, he's been around a while. Okay. So basically what you're looking at in Cleveland, you have one quarterback who's been around a while and always been a backup, never started. And, uh, excuse me. Uh, you need the cough uh, button feature like I have here. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Uh, he hasn't shown he has any talent uh, previous to last year. Um, and he's not going to get uh, to be a star quarterback to uh, a uh, quarterback can take your, that can lead your team for a couple of years. Um, and the other hand, you got a quarterback that's been in the league uh, a couple of years and has got a lot of room to grow. So who do you want uh, to lead you for the next couple of years? Kelly Holcomb. Holcomb. Well, I think he's been rotting on the vine. I think, you know, maybe there's some reason why he was cut. Who knows? There were other reasons why. I, I think that his performance last year was pretty outstanding. Uh, it was okay, I thought. <laughs> but that's just my point on that one. Uh, next thing, uh, we'll go to California for this. Um, with the uh, gubernatorial race. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people rag Schwarzenegger for getting into it, but... Uh, they say he doesn't have real actual political experience and everything. Um, but who do we have in the White House? Okay. we got a puppet, basically. Well, so got, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Okay. We've got a lot of smart people around him. 
You can't deny that. Uh, a lot of people that have been in, uh, been in the business for a while. Yeah, a lot of um, devious people around them. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, so with Schwarzenegger, it's sort of the same thing. You got a face that people like, get him elected, and then you got some other smart people backing him up to do stuff. See, I wonder if, you know, when, when Eastwood became mayor of Carmel, right. he, he didn't have nothing to lose. It's a little tiny town if he did a lousy job. But if you become governor of California and you do a lousy job, um, maybe it affects your box office in the future. I don't know. Yeah, it, it could. Although maybe he don't care. Maybe he's got so damn much money. I mean, you know he had a goal when he came to this country? He wanted to be a big movie star. He wanted to marry a Kennedy, and he wanted to be a politician. And he, he's about to achieve all three of them because Shriver's tied in with the Kennedys. <laughs> yeah, I saw that documentary on it. Um, but uh, if he was trying to do it alone, he'd probably ruin his career. But he's got people behind him that know what they're doing. Oh, I'm fairly certain that if he threw his hat in the ring that he was thinking, well, I'm going to have to surround myself with some smart people. <laughs> probably. Right. <laughs> probably. Um, and uh, if they uh, were able to get a recall in California, why can't we get one here? Is what I want to know. Well, I, I'm debating. You guys, talking to, you guys talk about the mayor. That's I know. I know the governor is more of a problem. Yeah. I just, I just thought it would be so simple for people to come up with a celebrity in town that would, that would be capable of re replacing Jane Campbell. Maybe it's, that, maybe it's any celebrity in town. Uh, Who's a celebrity in this town? I mean, all the TV people that are celebrities, they're not TV people. I mean, really, they're, they're news people. Yeah. Or weatherman or something. We could, maybe we could steal Jerry Springer. Maybe he'll move up north. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, it's, it's funny because his, his reason for not running was that he said the Democratic Party is all in disarray and does not have yeah. a clear focus. He's right. right. He's right. right. Yeah, he's got it there. He's got yeah. it there. He, uh, he should go independent. Yep. He doesn't like it. All right, Hank, thanks for checking in. I'm curious here, Rick. Hey. What's this car horror story? Oh, oh man, it's just broke my heart today okay yeah and i haven't been able to tell anybody about it it's just driving me crazy oh well here's your chance to vent oh uh, well i've got a an old 68 torino fastback you know big block 390 beautiful car 390 yeah four speed oh yeah nice car yeah man and you know i'm gonna take it out to the show today over here around the corner and take it out you know, blow the dust off it, clean it up. Right. And, uh, well, I better do the interior now, you know. So I'm inside cleaning up and doing the glass. And I look up in the sun visor there and pull it down. And there's like an egg-sized hole in there from the damn field mice. Oh, don't get in there. The mice got in the car. Somehow he got up on the sun visor, ate his way through the... Uh, headliner. He got in the headliner. Great. He's through the headliner. Right. He's got a big nest up in there. So now you got to pull the headliner down. Oh, man. So now I'm going through my catalog, you know. Right. Well, you know, I, you got to be careful. Them mice can get through a tiny, tiny little hole. How do you keep them out of there? That's you know, a... I'm out in the country. I mean, the, the car's in a barn. You know, it's concrete, but they find their ways in and... I wonder they destroy if, stuff. Man. I'll tell you, I, I, when, when you go on a 50,000-watt radio station and you ask a question like that, someone will call with an answer. And I don't know whether it's put mothballs in it or put something stinky they don't like in there. I've got the mouse traps all over the place with the peanut butter. Well, try putting the mouse traps in the car, maybe. I even did that. Well, I picked off five or six of them, and I'm laughing, hee, 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 you know. But they got me. I've had this car for 27 years. I had this car... Well, now, before I even had a license, okay, forever, and, I mean, number two car, you know, nothing perfect, right. but the interior was, like, the, the best part of the car. For those who don't know, they rate vehicles, old vehicles, from number one to number five, and no one has a number one. I mean, people no. say they have a number one. Oh, number one is a 95-point-plus show car that is never driven. Right. This is, this is probably even number three. That's all right. You but know what I mean? Want to hear a funny mouse story? Yeah. Uh, I don't I, think there is one. I was in upstate New York, and a buddy of mine's uncle had one of those old, uh, it was a sawmill. And you ever seen those where they'd set an engine outside and then run a long belt about maybe a foot wide that twists and runs all the way into the building? And that you fire, right the, on, yeah. Yeah, you fire the engine up, and then that, you know, they engage the clutch, and it lets the belt move, and then that runs the sawmill blade. So, the saw blade. So, the radiator is set. It's a Continental Red Seal engine. 
For those that don't know, it's a four-cylinder engine. It had a big radiator with a really with a big fan, and the fan was maybe a quarter inch away from this radiator shroud all the way around. Big, huge fan, but with a little tiny opening. So it got out there, and we're farting around with the thing. It hasn't run in a year or so. You know, we're playing around. We finally get it started, and you hear this, you hear this, and and there was mouse and mouse nest that got sucked up through into the shroud and got sucked into that little quarter-inch space in between and was blowing out, it blew out all over the yard. And I thought, well, so much for so much for mice. You know, yeah. Got rid of them that way. But I'm I'm telling you, man, my heart. It just, I haven't been able to get over this all day. Well, you'll be fine. At least I thought you were going to tell me you took it out and went to a show and some old lady backed into it and smashed it to no, pieces. No, no, that stuff, luckily, that kind of things don't happen, you know, too often to me, but... This is interesting. This, the mouse... Oh, man. I've got a couple of solutions on the board for mice, and one of them is coming from a person named Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be lucky about that. I had, uh, a, I had a 56 Lincoln that I bought <laughs> that a guy had in the garage. And for those who don't know, a 56 Lincoln, the battery went in the front passenger floor where your foot would go. You'd pull up the mat and pull out a panel, and then the battery sat down on a box. Right on. Well, the boxes would rot out, so they'd just patch them with a piece of strap steel underneath, and it was wide open. Well, this car sat in the garage for 20 years before I bought it. It was a Florida car, really clean, and the guy's wife had a lot of cats, and some of them lived in the garage, and they found their way into the Lincoln and peed on the seats, on the leather seats, and on the carpet. And I bought it, and I thought, I'll just take the carpet out. It'll be fine. Right the on. pee from the cats seeped into the leather seats, and it literally, there, there were plastic buttons for the power windows that were coming apart, not from, because I asked the guy that owned the car. I said, were these buttons coming apart because it was from the Florida sun? He goes, well, no, those were fine. And I thought, it's the, the ammonia in the pee was ruining plastic parts inside the car. Oh, yeah. Strong stuff. Oh, you, you're, I'd much rather have mice than cat piss. I don't know. I mean, you know, they, there was a cartoon in National Lampoon once that showed this girl cat sitting up on top of a porch railing, and she's looking down at a cat, and she says, yes, yes, Clarence, I love you. Now, would you please stop leaving that horrible smelling piss under the porch? <laughs> anyway, I got a ton of calls. Hey, thanks, man. I, I think it might feel a little better now. And keep listening, because some of them have something to say about uh, how to fix your mice. Okay. All right? Good night. Good night. Where do I go first? Sean Hill, you're on the air. You know, I called that number you gave me last time. I, I said I wanted your number off the air, and we'd go back and toss back a couple of beers. And, and some like, lady answered, and there was like a baby in the background or something. And she's, I said, is Sean L there? And she said, who? Yeah, you try that number again. I straighten him out. All right, I'll try, because uh, I didn't know if maybe that was just your nom de plume, your moniker, on your sobriquet on the radio. No, you try that, no, you got that number. Yeah, I'll call you, what, in the evening? Yeah, call I mean, me the night. Nah, I'll call you in the evening sometime, yeah. All right. All right, yeah, because I thought, well, maybe that wasn't your real name. No, no, no that right. is my real name. Uh, you called to say who you think could be the, be the new mayor if we had a recall. Yeah, Will, I want Wilma Smith. Wilma Smith, I was waiting for the name to come up. Yeah, I like that Wilma. Yeah, I wonder how many, if she gets another facelift, she's going to have a beard. Then we have a baby, and then we uh, get a scholarship, because we from East Cleveland there. Oh, I see. I get a scholarship, my baby get, and her baby gets a scholarship. I saw, I saw there was a, a, a retired, some anonymous uh, old teacher and another old principal or something, they're in their 80s, and they, they put money up for East Cleveland kids yeah, to go to we college. we the only one going to get a scholarship down there. I'd get it all, I'd be going to have it. Now, Jerry in North Olmsted called off the air and said, Robert Zemeckis directed used cars. So apparently I was right. If, I don't know if that Can means... I reinstate a movie? Pardon? Can I reinstate a movie? Sure. Well, uh, Blockbuster guy? Yeah. All right. Uh, used cars, I'd check it out. Yeah, I think Blockbuster'd have it. I don't see why not. Uh, who in it? Uh, Kurt Russell and Jack Warden and Garrett Graham and... Oh, I've seen it. Oh, I live. I've seen that movie. Yeah, it was a funny, oh. funny movie. Oh, man. And Grandpa Lewis, you know, Al Lewis, Grandpa Monster. I've seen that movie. I liked it. Mm. All right, David, you want... All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, you have a good evening. All right, you too. I'll give you a call sometime there. Ah, Wilma Smith. Uh, the, the grandpa of Cleveland weather didn't come up yet. Nobody suggested that. Maybe they feel he's doty. I don't know. You know, you can win a 2003 Ford F-150 Super Crew Lariat. That's a, wow, $34,420 value.
Nice truck, huh? Must be pretty laid out. And the Clavin Ford WTAM tailgate party truck giveaway. Listen for your cue to call starting tomorrow. For your chance to win one of 111 keys, one of those keys will start that truck, and you'll find out which one on September 12th on Wells and & Coleman. And you could be driving home in the brand-new F-150, the number one selling vehicle in, in the world for the last 21 years, courtesy of Clavin Ford and us. The big one, News Radio, WTAM 1100. Currently 73 degrees in Cleveland. Did I miss the weather? I might have, but I'm so close to going to Cliff. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend. More of the program after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on... Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. WTAM 1100. His name is Gilly. Hey. He's a cherry. And a hot dog. Talk so silly. Not really. He's on the AM dime. Amplitude modulation. He looks a little like Steve Buscemi. I didn't think so. His callers have all leaky belly. Rick Gilmore on he News Radio WTAM 1100. He's on Saturday and Sunday nights. No, just Sunday nights. Well, Gilly's on the air and you know everything's all right. The following material may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Absolutely. And if you don't like it, lump it. You fat, bloated idiots. Well, not all people are fat, bloated idiots, but some are. Don't sack me, boy. You ain't too big for me to give you a licking. Oh, well, hey. There's another caller from Lakewood. Come on, big boys, man. Who am I and who are we? The Rick Kilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. Amen and hallelujah. I still think that uh, the hamburger helper helping hand and the Arby's oven mitt should have a steel cage to the death thumb wrestling match. Winner eats all and gets a golden glove. I see Gregory Hines passed away. The dancer. Was 57 years old? I'm just curious. At, at Gregory Hines' funeral, will they play taps? Just something that I was just curious about. Hi, Bill. Yeah, Bill and Benford, you're rough, Greg. What? Uh, what'd you call me, Greg? Greg, no, Gregory Hines had died. Was that guy a fudge packer? No, no, no. I saw him at some award ceremony. He was kissing a white woman. He was definitely, I don't think he was gay. I think they gave him a Tony for one of them, one of them Broadway spectaculars he put together. Phone number here, 578-1100 in the classic 216 area code. Toll free, 888 wtam If we recalled the mayor of Cleveland, what celebrity would replace, uh, would replace her? Seems to me we got celebrities, uh, apparently, uh, somewhere I have here. Uh, oh, here, hold on, I'll wheel over here. You'll listen to, you'll listen to nothing for a second. Now I'm back. I had some stories. Schwarzenegger acknowledges he voted for the 1994 California measure to deny social services to illegal immigrants, to aliens. Disclosure offers the first glimpse of his stand on major issues. The Republican-backed Proposition 187 to deny health care and public education to illegal immigrants was passed by a wide margin. It was ruled eventually unconstitutional. Schwarzenegger has promoted himself in the California's gubernatorial recall race. Apparently, if it were held tomorrow, it'd be Arnold in the office as governor, because I guess everybody seems to like him. Democrats are quick to jump on this as a, a political Achilles heel. His campaign on Sunday released his tax returns. They, so, they showed Schwarzenegger paid more than nine million dollars in state and federal taxes in 2001 on 26 million dollars in income while giving more than four million dollars to charity well, see that does go to prove that the rich people pay a lot of money in taxes however over the long haul i believe it's uh, people like us we're the people that carry the country because there's so many of us but that's a lot of dough nine million out of 26 hey would you be a bad would you be a bad governor what if we had some celebrity from around here? We had a list of some celebrities who might replace the mayor if there were a recall here. Drew Carey or Butch Davis, Tim Hagen, Mike Trevisano, Mary Rose Okar, Wilma Smith. Who knows? 
I don't think there's going to be any recalls, but do, I guess apparently I've been sitting there asking the question for a couple of hours. And that's all we got? Maybe we got sidetracked. Talking about, uh, we were talking about mice. Some, some poor guy got mice in his car and he wanted to know, how do you keep mice out of your car? Andy, how do you keep mice out of your car? Well, <clears throat> what you do, you got to go inside the car, and I've done this. You got to roll up the windows, got a 12 gauge shotgun with a scatter shot, and start four or five shots throughout the whole car. Now, if you don't get all of them, the rest of them are running out. Okay, with that, you know, I've got to... I'm telling you, they leave. I imagine they would. They would. They, I've done it. They cut right out. They're gone. I got a better idea. Yeah. Well, if he had a garage with nothing else in it that he's worried about stinking it up... Right. Start the car up, cl mm -hmm. close the garage, roll the windows down, close the garage door, and let it run for about 20 minutes, and then it'd kill anything that's living in that garage, open the door, and it's going to smell like crazy, right? And then run back in there and turn you the thing that. off. But I don't think I'll be able to get out after that. Well, okay, well, yeah, I think the 12-gauge shotgun, an excellent idea. Get your Mossberg 500 and get some bird shot. Roll up the windows and start shooting around inside the car. It plays hell on windows and mice. It'll get rid of them pesky rodents, mus musculus. In the Latin class, learn something. Learn something on the Rick Gilmore show. Learn something on the program. I should have a cowbell and ring it. Class. Hello. Is this, Hi. Is this my neighbor? Yes, it is. You're on the air. Hey. Hey, you know what? What? That would take care of the ex-wives, too. 12-gauge <laughs> shotgun? No, no, the uh, oh, the gassing the idea with the uh, with the with the whole uh, garage thing. I had a uh, a car. I used to sell some vehicles once in a while, and there was a friend of my mother's. Her husband lost his job at the post office, and he was very upset apparently. And she came home from work one day and found him sitting in the garage in a I don't know like a '76 Gremlin. He'd taken a glass of iced tea and a nice book and went out there and got behind the wheel and started it up in the garage and had to expire. Oh, expired. he died nice. Yeah, he went to sleep. God gave him a great big warm hug and never let go. And that gay thing. And then I had to sell the car. And I uh, he used I to... Know. Yeah, I, mean, I never told anybody. It's not like selling a house where you have to disclose whether somebody killed themselves in it or See anything. See how that is? Pardon? See how that is? Yeah, I know. See, you can sell a car and somebody could... Uh, I mean, I've sold cars with God knows what kind of bodily fluids were in them. All right. Who knows? Hey, I got a question for you. I know. Uh, yeah, well, uh, anyway. what would Gary D. say? What is that? Which is a gay thing that you're talking about. Well, he'd say, you know, in his later years, I think he would have said, well, what are you going to do about these gays? You know, there's not much you can do. I guess if they want to live their own lifestyle, uh, don't try and shove things down other people's throats. Right, but but the other thing is, though, you remember one of the, one of the big promotions that he used to have? Which one? Stick it up your back door. Oh yeah, that was the that was the what was the the, the carpet cleaning company? <laughs> uh, what was the name of the company? I can't remember. And neither can I. Was it? And they'd come I'm, over. I'm hey, calling you. Hey, hey ladies, the, they'll come over and they'll stick their great big long they'll hose right their through. Hose up your back. No, right through your front door. Right through your front door. Oh, it was the back door. No, I think it was the front. I remember it well. It was a commercial he had for years. Our, our Slaney, maybe it was our Slanian brothers or one of them. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and they come over and they'll clean your rug. Well, you're saying their name. I don't remember. Well, I don't know. I mean, if, if, if I don't remember and you don't remember, nobody out there will, will remember. Okay. All right. All right, buddy. I okay. just wanted to remind you of that. Huh? Was that Gaty? Huh? Was there some gay going on? No, no, no. No, no. Not at all. Oh, okay. All, all right. right. I just wanted to know if there was some gay going on with our buddy. No, no, no. No, nothing gay going on. Nothing on... <laughs> He, he lived, what was the name of the island he lived on? I don't know. He beat up his old lady. What was that? Well, that was uh, Liz Richards. Yeah, that's no, right. No, they, they, right. they beat each other up. Oh, well. But he had that, where he lived, he had a name. It was some kind of island he lived on. It was like, you know, it wasn't Duck Island, but it was some kind of island. Island Drive. Yeah, he lived on Island Drive. Yeah, now, if he, lived on, dinghy. if he lived on fire... Remember when they stole his dinghy? They, stole his, they, they burned his boat, too. They burned, they burned his dinghy. They burned your mama. They burned his dinghy. They burned your mama, and then they, they stole his dinghy. <laughs> and he couldn't get Chief Doyle, or whatever his name was, <laughs> to fix the problem. Yeah. He lived on Island Drive. If he lived on Fire Island Drive, there might have been a problem. Yeah, so you got to watch yourself. I used to see his girlfriend driving around in one of them Cadillac Seville's. With the, remember the old ones with the slant back rear end? Yes, yeah, you're, you're you're living the same you're living the same life as as uh, as, as Gary there. Well, he's he was married five times. I got four more to go. 
<laughs> like you I, have time. You have time. I know. Like I said before, you know, people will call and, uh, you know, and say, when are you going to get married again? I say, I'm just going to find a woman that hates me and give her my house. That's right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to bother getting You have married. something to give her. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kept my house in the last one. You're a giver. You're a giver. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a lover, not, not, a, not, a, not a fighter. You're a giver. I'm a giver, yeah. I'm a humanitarian. <laughs> You're right, buddy. All right, I'll talk Take to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. I'm a humanitarian. I just like to, I like to give my money away. I like to give away, I give it to my lawyer, give it to the attorney, give it to the mouthpiece, the esquire, you know, that sort of thing. And just open, open my wallet and listen for the giant sucking sound. That's all you have to do. Jim, you're on the air. Hey, Gilly, how you doing? Uh, doing just fine, I think. Yeah, well, I was calling in about the celebrity mayor thing. Yeah, we got to find a celebrity that could replace uh, Jane Campbell, or maybe we, we could recall the governor, but there aren't... I don't think there's any more celebrities around the state than there are here in Cleveland, are there? Maybe we oh, could get Le LeBron James for governor. Drew Carey or Janeway? Well, we got Drew Carey. Yeah, what about Janeway? Janeway? Yeah, the one from Star Trek. She's from Cleveland. Oh, Tim Hagen's wife. Yeah. Kate Mulgrew. Mulgrew, yeah. She'd, she'd be all right. What do you think? Um, okay. Kate Mulgrew. She's not on the list, but the list is Mulgrewing. Oh, there you go. All right, I'll put her down. Uh, you take care, Gilly. All right, you too. Ah, here we go. Someone knows the name of the carpet cleaning company. Ken, you're on the air. Hey, Gilly. It's Ken in Chagrin Falls. I, uh, I'm friends with your other neighbor on the other side, probably, Mike and Mary Susan. But oh, yeah, yeah. You, are you the guy that's afraid to come down to Tremont? Yeah, that's me. Well, yeah. they, my neighbors were telling me, this is, there was, there's, there's this guy, he's a big fan of your show, and they, he won't come down to Tremont to meet you because he thinks it's dangerous. Oh, I, I, I just tease him about the neighborhood, and it, 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 it's, I don't know, it's rooted in uh, the fact that we've been going down there for 20 years, and it's gotten a lot better. It's sort of just the shtick, you know? Right, well, you know, I was going down there 20 years ago, and it, I mean, it was a bad neighborhood. Well, when the Janglers, the band that Mike and I were involved with in 87, 88, uh, they used to uh, live in one of those old bars that was closed down. They used it as a rehearsal space, and there was just scary stuff going on all the time. And, you know, once you start making babies and all, and, and you know, Mike saying, hey, hey, bring the kids down, and it's like, yeah, yeah I'll think about it. But well, yeah, it's gotten a whole lot better. I walk my dog at 3 in the morning and not wearing nothing but a pair of gym shorts, and, I mean, you know, it's not like I'm carrying my, my pepper spray with me. I mean, it, it, it's really gotten a lot better. Well, my dad was born in those projects at the end of the place back in 1941. So. Valley View. Yeah, yeah. I hear, I hear Valley View projects are going to get bulldozed. Jeez. Well, he'll probably croak right about the same time. No. no. <laughs> hey, uh, wasn't it Dijon Carpet Cleaners? I think you're right. Dijon Carpet Cleaners, ladies, they'll bring their big long hose over and come right through your front, stick it right in your front door and suck the suck 'em up, boys. That's what it was. Yeah, he'd always talk about his uh, wife, Alice, I think it was, and... Well, the guy was great. I, I, every time I talk to you, I tell you you're the reincarnate of Gary <laughs> D. Well, I don't think I'm that insane. You, 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 well, you, you know, though, but you, you got that radical edge that no one else is doing on the air long term. And, you know, it's usually hot air, whereas, whereas you're pretty darn passionate about what you talk about. So, Well, it's a lot easier to talk about things you're passionate about, because if you don't care less about something, you know, let's say you had let's say you had news stories and you had to rate them from 10 to 1 and 10 and 9 were pretty close. But uh, nine, you were really passionate about nine being, you know, ten being the, the most important thing to talk about. What I mean, if ten's a ten and there ain't nothing else below it, I guess you're talking about number ten. But if ten and nine are pretty close and you're really passionate, do nine. You know what I mean? Do num topic number nine because if you can really, you know, you, you, you got something in your heart behind it. People, people believe you and, and will listen to you because they know you're 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 talking from you rather than just filling the airways with, with what's hot to yap about. So. Well, I'll tell you, it makes it a lot more fun to do your job if you're interested in what you're talking about. Well, I've been taping you for about six, seven years and, and saving them and uh, occasionally pull out uh, recordings that are three years old, uh, edit them down to, to CD, and it's, it's entertaining hearing uh, the past. And I, I, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I, I put the, the first show after your honeymoon onto CD and hearing the... Uh, 
the, the change in tone and, and attitude toward marriage uh, is, is, has been phenomenal. I, <laughs> I, I got separated about a week before you got married, and you got divorced before I did. So uh, I wish you had the first show that I did on, on this radio station, because I sure as heck can't find it. I don't think I have the first ones. I, uh, People were beating me up because I said Morton Downey Jr. quit because he needed, you need two lungs to do this job, and he was a big quitter. <laughs> And people were all mad. They, they thought I was making fun of them or something. And, they, you know, they, they, were, they were saying that they hoped I died of lung cancer. One lady called and she said something about, she used to listen to me on the other station I was on. And she used to pray that, pray that I, I don't know what, pray that I, they'd take me off the air or something. I, and that, but now I'm okay. I said, what? I said, you wasted God's time praying. I said, that's, that's what that knob is that turns the radio on and off. There's another one that changes the, the, the station. If you don't like what I'm saying, for God's sake, you're going you're gonna to pray? I mean, that's like, you know, there's all kinds of people in the world. There's probably people out there that pray for jumbo jet crashes. There's a lot of morons out there that spend time uh, wasting time telling people what to do rather than leave it and living their own life. Ken, would you like to do the weather with me? Hey, let's do it. Can All right. Eileen? No, it's uh, Betsy. Oh, 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 hey, her husband got fine. He disappeared, didn't he? No, oh, hold on. Triple Doppler forecast from TV3 meteorologist Betsy Kling. Uh, tonight, some storms possible south of Cleveland, low in the low 60s. Tomorrow, nice here. South of Cleveland, thunderstorms on high of 80, currently 70 degrees in Cleveland. 70, I want to remind you, listen to the Tribe Fan Fact during extra innings with Kevin Keene, and then listen to win Indians tickets the next morning on Wells and Coleman in the morning right here. And there's still great, st great seats available. Just call uh, 420-HITS, H-I-T-S, in the classic 216 area code. Your home of the Indians is us. News Radio, WTAM 1100. Now, where were we? And uh, Boom Boom's okay with the thunderstorms. Well, I, mean, I haven't gotten any rain in my area. I really don't care less. I have no grass, so it's not like I have to cut it. The weeds grow up around the concrete, you know, that kind of thing. So flooding is probably the biggest hazard. Yeah. So anyway, uh, what were you saying before I did the weather? Oh, Betsy Kling's husband, that 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 personal, you know, personality void newscaster that somehow married a semi-hot news weather babe. He disappeared pretty quick off the airwaves here. Yeah, I didn't even know that that was her husband until somebody mentioned it. That was me. The, oh, okay. And uh, then I saw him one time, and now he, he's uh, he's having lunch with Jimmy Hoffa. Or 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 riding in the uh, SUV with David Rogers. Uh, or, oh, I don't know about that. Let's hope not, huh? Or puking on a street corner with Emmett Miller. Well, I haven't heard about that one. Well, that was a story from a long time ago that apparently when Emmett was a newsman here in town, he liked to drink a little bit in the flats on weekends and, and, and bleh, you know, and then yell and scream. And I, well, I guess it did him good because then he ended up going to, guess where, California and getting some kind of TV show. So who do you think could replace Mayor Jane? Oh, 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 Michael Stanley, our, our quasi, you know, Northeast Ohio wannabe celebrity that can do any job. Inadequately. <laughs> Maybe uh, Jerry Shirley. Uh, didn't he get in trouble with money, fundraising, and all oh, that's part of being a politician, though? Yeah, yeah that's why, well, you know, I know the whole story, but I'm just not going to tell it on the air. Yeah. I'll well. If I ever run into you sometime off the air, I'll tell you the whole story. I, I look forward to meeting you one of these days. All right. So uh, I will venture into Tremont for that purpose. All right. Sounds good. All right, Gilly. All right. Talk to you later. Thank you. Yeah, you're more than welcome. You know where to find me because you're friends with my neighbors. That's not hard to do, is it? Joe, you're on the big one. Hey, I, uh, speaking of people who would be good for mayor, when I worked down in Columbus for the Speaker of the House, Mayor Rose Okar was on my, our committee. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm a good, true blue Republican. Didn't agree with a lot of, you know, what she has to say or stand for. She was excellent on committee and uh, brought a whole lot to the table. A lot of these guys who we worked, who we didn't agree with would blabber on not even know what they were talking about. She brought a lot to the table. She would be a great mayor. You know, the thing I didn't like about Mary Rose was I recall when she was in the House of Representatives, she wanted to get the house hair salon redone, right? So she took a quarter million dollars of taxpayers' money and had the house hair salon redone when there were only two women in the house, and she doesn't have that much hair left to begin with. You know, that, that's a cold-blooded thing. Cause she got in... Uh, when she was still a young woman, so... Well, all right. Well, she lives in, doesn't she live in one of those exclusive Ohio City homes built with no studs, all tongue and groove? I, uh... You know what? I, I don't know. Oh, I don't uh, know, but I, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, and she got in trouble for buying that Georgetown condo for her 
a lady friend? Uh, I wouldn't want to even get it and go venture in that one. I don't think you wouldn't either. I, I don't don't imagine that in the area you want to go in. I mean, as someone who I just don't always you know don't agree with on stuff, she just she was the best committee person we worked with among the Democrats, and uh, I just I want you know I'm not well. Not even, yeah. I'll tell you this, Joe. Uh, yeah. She's the only person that got two votes. She's on the list. Somebody else called up earlier and said Mary Rose Ocar, and she's the only We got Drew Carey, Butch Davis, Tim Hagan, Trevisano, Mary Rose Ocar, Wilma Smith, Kate Mulgrew, Michael Stanley, <laughs> and John Kasich, who I've heard the name, and I don't even know exactly what he does. He was a congressman down in the Columbus area. Pat Teabury took his place. He was the budget committee chairman. Um, and Pat Teabaggy? Pat Teabury. Oh, Teabury. Yeah, okay. his, uh, his cousin... Uh, to Barry is also a newsman down on one of those TV channels in Columbus. Gotcha. One of them ones I never watch. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're not going to watch Columbus News. Well, I go to Columbus once in a while, but I just, you know, that is curious. You ever go to another state and then you watch their news and you think, these people are considered celebrities, I guess, in the neighborhood. And, and you know, I have no idea who the hell they are. I could bump into them on a street corner in Cleveland and they'd be thinking to themselves, you just don't understand how important I am in Pittsburgh. <laughs> You're like, no, I have no idea who you are. Are you uh, cast over in Pittsburgh? But does this uh, st station go to Pittsburgh? Uh, you're not you're not simulcast anywhere. You're just a Cleveland guy, right? Well, no, this is we cover 38 states and half of Canada at night. Yeah, I'm with you. I, mean, they, uh, I put a car in the paper once, and somebody left a message on my voicemail. They said, uh, yeah, I'm calling about the car, Rick. Because it was my voice on the answering machine, and I thought, I, I don't know this person, and uh, I didn't put my name in the voicemail. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? It just said, hi, you've reached blah, blah, blah. I'll leave your name and number after the tone. Well, they knew who it was from the voice. So as long as I keep my mouth shut, then, then I'm not being paid to talk when I'm not at work, so I should just keep my mouth shut and nobody know who I am. How about Triv? Man, that would be quite the uh, nominee. Well, Triv's also on the list for mayor. Goodness. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I heard you mention him. I was just thinking, I mean, talk about bombastic, but... And talk, yeah, I got to run. Yeah, talk, talk about giving new meaning to the term body politic. He could really throw his weight around in the, in the in 601 Lakeside in City Hall. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend. More of the program after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. The big one. ClevelandMortgageMarket.com is now open. Eight local lenders have combined forces to provide you with the easiest way to shop for your mortgage. With today's interest rates being as low as they are, who has time to shop around? Let ClevelandMortgageMarket.com do the work for you. It's free, fast, and it's local. Save time and money by comparing eight different offers with just one click. Fixed rate, adjustable rates, refinance, everything you'd expect from your local mortgage lender. Click and compare confidentially. ClevelandMortgageMarket.com. Right now at Sears Auto Center, all Goodyear tires are on sale. Plus, when you buy four Goodyear tires, get a free Die Hard weather handler battery. Now through August 23rd. Sears. Good life. Great price. There are three kinds of Tic Tac lovers. Those who adore Tic Tac mints for their superb ability to freshen their breath. Ah. Those who prefer them for their great taste. Mmm. And then there are those who love them because they do it all. Ah. Mmm. Mmm. Ah. Tic Tac. It's not just because they taste great, and it's not just because they freshen your breath. It's because they do both that they're amazing. It's not just a mint, it's a tic-tac. Imagine you're inside a heart center right now, in a hospital gown, just lying there staring at the ceiling and waiting. You see a cardiologist standing over you, and just for a moment, your eyes meet. If you're ever in this position, you want to know you're looking at the strongest, most skilled heart specialist you can find, bar none. It's your heart. You want it in the hands of the very best cardiology team. The Cleveland Clinic Heart Center has been rated the nation's number one heart center by U.S. News and World Report. No other staff has more experience dealing with the heart, and no one has more advanced technology available to them. Before you're in this position, before you decide to undergo any heart procedure, call the Cleveland Clinic Heart Center at 866-289-6911 to schedule an appointment or to get a second opinion. The Cleveland Clinic. 
Every life deserves world-class care. Continuing coverage on Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100, a service of Clear Channel Worldwide. A great tap dancer has died. Good evening, I'm Cliff Bakley, and this is the 11:30 report on News Radio WTAM 1100. Details coming up. Channel 3 Triple Doppler weather. Here's meteorologist Betsy Kling. Showers and thunderstorms still going to be deflected to our south. Partly cloudy skies tonight, partly sunny skies tomorrow, and temperatures topping out near 80. Currently 69 degrees at your official weather station. News Radio WTAM 1100. Tony Award winning actor and tap dancer Gregory Hines has died of cancer at age 57. He was once asked on ABC's Nightline how he came up with his tap dancing steps. I hear the combination in my head and then I'm doing it actually as I hear it. Sometimes there are variations of steps that I've done in the past uh, and sometimes they're just brand new. Hines appeared in several movies including White Nights and The Cotton Club. He had his own sitcom on TV and a recurring role on Will and Grace. An advocacy group is criticizing Ohio cities for making it too hard for homeless people. The group says Cleveland, Columbus, Dayton, and Toledo harassed the homeless. Libra uh, Liberian President Charles Taylor has recorded a farewell address to his country, although few people are likely to hear it. I did not want to leave this country. I can say I am being forced into exile by the world's superpower. Taylor, who steps down tomorrow, called himself a sacrificial lamb who's resigning to end what he called a U.S.-backed rebel war against him. There's never been a wedding like today's at the Johnson Space Center in Texas. Ekaterina Dmitriev left Russia with her parents when she was only three. Today, she married Russian cosmonaut Yuri Melenchenko. The only thing is, he's on the International Space Station. The honeymoon will have to wait until he lands in late October. The Indians won their third in a row, beating the Angels 3-1. to one. The Rockers over Indiana, 71-67. I'm Cliff Bakley on Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. Continuing coverage coming up at the top of the hour. Bulletins at 1. News radio, WTAM 1100. Rick Gilmore. You poked the thing through or you didn't poke the thing through, okay? Pokey. On News Radio WTAM 1100. Yeah, if we ever do a program about why gay men are attracted to other gay men, we'll have to get a hold of Hanging Chad. Hanging Chad and Dimpled Chad can call from Florida. I don't know why. Uh, Tremont Troy brought that up. Why two men are attracted to each other? I've, I've asked that question before. I said, I'm a man, and I know how bad a man can smell. I don't mean another man, I mean me. So why you'd be a stinky guy and want to wake up with another stinky guy? I mean, if you could go into that, if you're gay, 5781100 in the classic 216 area code. Without being too graphic, I don't need to hear about prostate glands or anything, you know, I just, I don't know. I mean, when a man kisses another man, is it just like kissing another woman, except that there's hair, more hair on her face? Is it like kissing, you know, an Italian woman? Or, I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't get it. We weren't even talking about that. We were talking about if we recall the mayor of the city of Cleveland. And I'm not suggesting we do, but just like they're recalling Gray Davis, governor of California, they got almost 200 people on the list now, including Larry Flint. I want to be the smart peddler with a heart. Just because I'm a pornographer doesn't mean I wouldn't make a good governor. And they got Arnold Schwarzenegger running. They got all kinds of people running out there. If you were a Californian, a frontier state, would you vote for Arnold, the candidate? -er? Would you vote for him? Is that the reason just enough to vote for him? I mean, they said he'd win tomorrow if the election were held, just because I guess they don't care if he has any political savvy whatsoever. Just because he's Arnold, he can fix the problem. Now, remember, he was also in Kindergarten Cop. And he was also in Hercules in New York. He couldn't even speak the language in 1970. I don't know. I don't know. What does it all mean? Hoyle and Lorraine, you're on the air. Hey, Gilly, love your show. Thank you. You know what's funny? I always keep hearing, like, secondhand from people that, uh, 
Like my friend Mike told me, uh, he says, you know, Danny Coghlan and, Je and Jeff Phelps were in, and they both said they think you're the best guy on the radio in Cleveland. I said, well, why don't they ever call up? They can call here if they're listening, you know, call and sing praises on the air if they want to. Well, Gilly, I'm going to tell you something. You know, I travel about 35, 40,000 miles a summer just doing old car shows for Volkswagen. Oh, okay. you, so you work for Volkswagen? No, no, no. Oh. I work for Ford Motor Company. Oh, all right. But I'm in the old Volkswagens, pre-75 uh, Bugs buses and things like that. And you truly are the beacon of my life in the summer. On a fog-shrouded summer evening. Buddy, I'm going to tell you what. When I'm in Connecticut, when I'm in Florida, when I'm in Canada, when I'm in Missouri, the first thing I dial into is Gilly on a Sunday because I'm coming home from car shows. My first car was a 60 Beetle. Well, everybody owned a bug. Everybody owned a bus. Everybody consummated a relationship, a love affair, or a child in a Volkswagen. And that's my cup of tea, and it's been that way for about 30 years. Yeah, I go back to the old days where people put batteries in on a bug, and, and they wouldn't buy the right battery, and they'd get a friend in the back seat, and he'd short out the battery against the seat springs because they didn't get the one with the little plastic cover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? That still goes on for the novice. I used to rebuild floors, and I'd take conduit and pipe bend it and put it in and bolt down sheet metal to the outer rocker panel area. And sure. I, I knew how to fix them. I, I used to buy them for $50, $100, and... You know, you'd drive them until you got sick of driving them um, one in the wintertime and using using a, a, a an old credit card to scrape the windshield on the inside. Yep. And nowadays, that same $50 car you buy costs you ten grand. You know, I threw out, what were they, Stuart Warner gas heaters? Oh, yeah, the gas heaters, sure. I threw them out. Sure. And, I mean, what, are they worth something now, even if they well, need... Well, today, if they're ready to go, they're $500 a piece. What if they need work? 250 Jesus criminy. Yeah. So if I can... If I've got these things where I store all my stuff and I can find some of these gas heaters... Well, you know, I, matter of fact, I just got back from a, a big show where there was over 500 show cars in Columbus yesterday. And uh, those heaters were going for, I mean, junk heaters. I mean, pure junk were 150 to $200. Well, I'm going to go tomorrow and see if I can... I mean, I had three or four of these things. That would come in handy to have a grand laying around. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You put them on eBay. Right. Go to the bank. Wow. Go to the bank. You know, it's funny because I've got a like I've got a, a '61 Corvair hood and then door. I've got a Beetle front fender, and I mean I've got you know stuff I just saved, and that's the place to get rid of it, huh? eBay. Well, what do I do about shipping it to somebody though? Do I make them come pick it up? No, no. What you do is uh, once they pay you the money, you take it to UPS or FedEx, or take it to the uh, uh, U U.S. Post Office, wrap it up, uh, you know, put a little foam on it or whatever you have to do, and ship it to them. Then they pay the shipping. Yes, sir. And d d does the post office box it for you? Well, it depends. It depends on what the item is. A lot of things, usually what you have to do, you have to pre-wrap it. You have to put the foam on it. You have to put the bubble wrap on it, whatever it needs. Okay. Or you can, t I mean, if you have a real big ticket item, which I've shipped engines for, for uh, Volkswagen engines, and uh, I've uh, uh, boxed them up, you know, with, uh, with uh, uh, lumber. I actually just, you know, nailed them together. I got you. Out to the coast and that. And I've had stuff that I've shipped to Japan, you know. I still own a Subaru 360. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, anybody wants to buy it? <laughs> no, you know, that's the kind of thing you just beg somebody to steal and make sure you had insurance on it. Well, I think the windshield's worth 300 bucks. That's, you know, they, they become worth more in parts than they are as a vehicle if they were just, you know. But Absolutely. I also have something you'd probably find interesting. A 64 NSU Wankel Spider. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, what, what's something like that worth? It ain't been on the road in years, and, you know, the motor's apart because the, motor uh, the motors went bad at 10,000 miles and them things. You leave it just the way it is, and you put it on eBay, and you describe it like you describe it. It's got 12,000 miles on it, and it's been in a garage for 30-some years. Someone will bid on it and, and come to your door and pick it up and be as happy as a sissy in boys down with his pants on backwards. <laughs> I don't know... <laughs> I, you know, I talked to somebody, I says, you know, when I fill in for Wells and Coleman, I says, I don't take phone calls because, I says, I, I attract a different crowd than Bill Wells no, does. I tell you, Gilly, you're the best, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, I listen to shows from, from Oklahoma City to, to the upper parts of Canada to all the way down to Cuba. 
I picked up shows, and truly, you are the best. I mean, I'm not blowing smoke, and I'm only saying for one reason, because you are. All right, if you were blowing you smoke, are. you'd need new apex seals or something. No, yeah. no. Hey, uh, you know, uh, you were talking earlier about the, uh, uh, the uh, movie Used Cars. Yeah. Now, did you guys get around to, to find out who the director was? I believe it was Robert Zemeckis. No, it was Steven Spielberg. No, nah, might he might have produced it, but it Take was... Take it to the bank. I, I, uh, I've watched it a hundred times. I got laid four or five times just watching that movie because I was in the car business, and I used to have the young little Philly uh, uh, car salesman, and I said, this is a movie you got to watch, and bing, bing, bing. Well, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I bet you I bet you money it's Robert Zemeckis. No, he was... He was the producer. Are Spielberg you? was the director. Five, seven, eight, eleven hundred. Somebody out there's got to have a Leonard Malton movie book, and they can look it up. Yeah, I've got one at home, but I don't have it with me. Now, one other thing, uh, Gilly, and uh, I'm going to let you go to your other callers. You know, you were talking earlier. Someone was talking about uh, uh, gay animals or gay pets. No, I had a gay rat. Well, you know, I had a gay bear. Oh, you had a pet bear? Pet bear, and he laid his paw on the table one time, and after that, I had to get rid of him. Oh, I, I got, I got you. <laughs> All right, Hoyle, thanks. All right, buddy. All right, bye-bye. Hey. Hank? Yeah? I was just debating. I see another phone caller that's called earlier. Now, uh, I was almost going to... Now, you know, I generally do not take the same caller two times in one evening. Oh, I haven't talked to you. Oh, not you. It's another caller. Oh, oh okay. I was just okay. looking at the big board. And, uh, oh, I see. I mean, it's probably an interesting call, but he's already called once. Oh, well, that's unfair. Well, you haven't called before. No, no I've never called before. And never, ever? Never. I, I, I listen, but I've never called. Well, welcome to the program. Yeah, nice to be here. Yeah. <laughs> First thing, um, we'll start at home. i got a couple things I want to talk about. We'll go with uh, the Browns. Okay. Uh, how long has uh, Holcomb been in the NFL? I, I think he's been around a while while well, he was cut by a couple of teams, wasn't he? Exactly. So he's been around uh, at least twice as long as Couch, right? Yeah, he's been around a while. Okay. So basically what you're looking at in Cleveland, you have one quarterback who's been around a while and always been a backup, never started. And, uh, excuse me. Uh, you need the cough uh, button feature like I have here. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Uh, he hasn't shown he has any talent uh, previous to last year. Um, and he's not going to get uh, to be a star quarterback to uh, a uh, quarterback can take your, that can lead your team for a couple of years. Um, and the other hand, you've got a quarterback that's been in the league uh, a couple of years and has got a lot of room to grow. So who do you want uh, to lead you for the next couple of years? Kelly Holcomb. Holcomb. Well, I think he's been rotting on the vine. I think, you know, maybe there's some reason why he was cut. Who knows? There were other reasons why. I, I think that his performance last year was pretty outstanding. It was, it was, eh, it was okay, I thought. <laughs> but that's just my point on that one. Uh, next thing, uh, we'll go to California for this. Um, with the uh, gubernatorial race. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people rag Schwarzenegger for getting into it, but... Uh, they say he doesn't have real actual political experience and everything. Um, but who do we have in the White House? Okay. We've got a puppet, basically. Well, got, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Okay. We've got a lot of smart people around him. You can't deny that. Uh, a lot of people that have been in, uh, been in the business for a while. Yeah, a lot of um, devious people around him. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Um, so with Schwarzenegger, it's sort of the same thing. You've got a face that people like. Get him elected. And then you got some other smart people backing him up to do stuff. See, I uh, wonder if, you know, when, when Eastwood became mayor of Carmel, right. he, he didn't have nothing to lose. It's a little tiny town if he did a lousy job. But if you become governor of California and you do a lousy job, um, maybe it affects your box office in the future. I don't know. It, it could. Although maybe he don't care. Maybe he's got so damn much money. I mean, you know he had a goal when he came to this country? He wanted to be a big movie star, he wanted to marry a Kennedy, and he wanted to be a politician, and he, he's about to achieve all three of them because Shriver's tied in with the Kennedys. <laughs> yeah, I saw that documentary on it. Um, but uh, if he was trying to do it alone, he'd probably ruin his career. But he's got people behind him that know what they're doing. Oh, I'm fairly certain that if he threw his hat in the ring that he was thinking, well, I'm going to have to surround myself with some smart people. <laughs> probably. Right. <laughs> probably. Um, and uh, if they uh, were able to get a recall in California, why can't we get one here? 
is what I want to know. Well, I, I'm debating. You guys, talking, you guys talk about the mayor. That's I know. I know the governor is more of a problem. Yeah. I just, I just thought it would be so simple for people to come up with a celebrity in town <laughs> that, would, that would be capable of re replacing Jane Campbell. Maybe, uh, it's, maybe it's any celebrity in town. Uh, Who's a celebrity in this town? I mean, all the TV people that are celebrities, they're not TV people. I mean, really, they're, they're news people. Yeah. Or weathermen or something. Maybe we could steal Jerry Springer. Maybe we'll move up north. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, it's, it's funny because his, his reason for not running was that he said the Democratic Party is all in disarray and does not have yeah. a clear focus. He's right. right. He's right. right. Yeah, he's got it there. He's got mm -hmm. it there. He, he should go independent. Yep. He doesn't like it. All right, Hank. Thanks for checking in. I'm curious here, Rick. Hey. What's this car horror story? Oh, man, it just broke my heart today. Okay? Yeah. And I haven't been able to tell anybody about it. It's just driving me crazy. Oh, well, here's your chance to vent. Oh, uh, well, I've got a an old 68 Torino fastback, you know, big block. 390? Beautiful car, 390, yeah. four speed. Oh, yeah, nice car. Yeah, man, and... You know, I'm going to take it out to the show today over here around the corner and take it out, you know, blow the dust off it, clean it up. Right. And, uh, well, I better do the interior now, you know. So I'm inside cleaning up and doing the glass. And I look up in the sun visor there and pull it down, and there's like an egg-sized hole in there from the damn field mice. Oh, they'll get in there. The mice got in the car. Somehow he got up on the sun visor, ate his way through the headliner. He got in the headliner, great. He threw the headliner. Right. He's got a big nest up in there. So now you got to pull the headliner down. Oh, man. So now I'm going through my catalog, you know. Right. Well, you know, you got to be careful. Them mice can get through a tiny, tiny little hole. How do you keep them out of there? That's you know, a... I'm out in the country. I mean, the, the car's in a barn. You know, it's concrete, but they find their ways in and... I wonder they destroy if destroy stuff. Man. I'll tell you, I, I, when, when you go on a 50,000 watt radio station and you ask a question like that, someone will call with an answer. And I don't know whether it's put mothballs in it or put something stinky they don't like in there. I've got the mouse traps all over the place with the peanut butter. Well, try putting the mouse traps in the car, maybe. I even did that. Well, I picked off five or six of them and I'm laughing, hee hee hee, you know. But they got me. I've had this car for 27 years. I had this car. Well, now, before I even had a license, okay, forever, and, I mean, number two car, you know, not the perfect, right. but the interior was, like, the, the best part of the car. For those who don't know, they rate vehicles, old vehicles, from number one to number five, and no one has a number one. I mean, people no. say they have a number one. Oh, number one is a 95-point-plus show car that is never driven. Right. This is, this is probably even number three. That's all right. You but know what uh, I mean? Want to hear a funny mouse story? Yeah. Uh, I don't I, think there is one. I was in upstate New York, and a buddy of mine's uncle had one of those old, uh, it was a sawmill. And you ever seen those where they'd set an engine outside and then run a long belt about maybe a foot wide that twists and runs all the way into the building and that you fire right the on, yeah. yeah you fire the engine up and then that you know they engage the clutch and it lets the belt move and then that runs the sawmill blade so yeah. the saw blade so the radiator is set it's a continental red seal engine for those who don't know it's a four cylinder engine it had a big radiator with a really with a big fan and the fan was maybe a quarter inch away from this radiator shroud all the way around. Big, huge fan, but with a little tiny opening. So it got out there, and we're farting around with the thing. It hasn't run in a year or so. You know, we're playing around. We finally get it started. And you hear this. And you hear this. And there was mouse and mouse nest that got sucked up through into the shroud and got sucked into that little quarter-inch space oh, in between man. and was blowing out, it blew out all over the yard. And I thought, well, so much for, so much for mice. You know, yeah. Got rid of them that way. But I'm, I'm telling you, man, my heart, it just, I haven't been able to get over this all day. Well, you'll be fine. At least I thought you were going to tell me you took it out and went to a show and some old lady backed into it and smashed it to no, pieces. No, 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 that stuff... Luckily, that kind of things don't happen, you know, too often to me, but... This is interesting. This, the mouse, oh, man. I've got a couple of solutions on the board for mice, and one of them's coming from a person named Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be lucky about that. I had, uh, a, I had a 56 Lincoln that I bought that a guy had in the garage. And for those who don't know, a 56 Lincoln, the battery went in the front 
passenger floor where your foot would go. You'd pull up the mat and pull out a panel, and then the battery set down on a box. Right on. Well, the boxes would rot out, so they'd just patch them with a piece of strap steel underneath, and it was wide open. Well, this car sat in the garage for 20 years before I bought it. It was a Florida car, really clean, and the guy's wife had a lot of cats. And some of them lived in the garage, and they found their way into the Lincoln and peed on the seats, on the leather seats, and on the carpet. And I bought it, and I thought, I'll just take the carpet out, it'll be fine. Right the on. pee from the cats seeped into the leather seats, and it literally, there, there were plastic buttons for the power windows that were coming apart. Not from, because I asked the guy that owned the car, I said, were these buttons coming apart because it was from, from the Florida sun? He goes, well, no, those were fine. And I thought, it's the, the ammonia in the pee was ruining plastic parts inside the car. Oh, yeah. Strong stuff. Oh, you, you're, I'd much rather have mice than cat piss. I don't know. I mean, you know, they, there was a cartoon in National Lampoon once that showed this girl cat sitting up on top of a porch railing, and she's looking down at a cat, and she says, yes, yes, Clarence, I love you. Now, would you please stop leaving that horrible-smelling piss under the porch? <laughs> Anyway, I got a ton of calls. Hey, thanks, man. I, I think it might feel a little better now. And keep listening because some of them have something to say about uh, how to fix your mice. Okay. All right? Good night. Good night. Where do I go first? Sean Hill, you're on the air. You know, I called that number you gave me last time. I, I said I wanted your number off the air, and we'd go back and toss back a couple of beers. And, and some like, lady answered, and it was like a baby in the background or something. And she, I said, is Sean L there? And she said, who? Yeah, you try that number again. I straighten him out. All right, I'll try, because uh, I didn't know if maybe that was just your nom de plume, your moniker, on your sobriquet on the radio. No, you try that number. You got that number? Yeah, I'll call you, what, in the evening? Yeah, call I mean, me tomorrow night. Yeah, I'll call you in the evening sometime, yeah. All right. All right, yeah, because I thought, well, maybe that wasn't your real name. No, no, no that right. is my real name. Uh, you called to say who you think could be the be the new mayor if we had a recall. Yeah, Will, I want Wilma Smith. Wilma Smith. I was waiting for the name to come up. Yeah, I like that Wilma. Yeah, I wonder how many, if she gets another facelift, she's going to have a beard. Then we have a baby, and then we uh, get a scholarship because we from East Cleveland there. Oh, I see. I get a scholarship, my baby getting her baby gets I saw. I saw there was a, a, a retired, some anonymous uh, old teacher and another old principal or something. They're in their 80s, and they, they put money up for East Cleveland kids yeah, to go to college. we be the only one going to get a scholarship down there. I'd get it all, I'd be going to have it. Now, Jerry in North Olmstead called off the air and said, Robert Zemeckis directed used cars. So apparently I was right. If, well, I don't know if that Can means... I rinse that movie? Pardon? Can I rinse that movie? Sure. All right. Blockbuster guy? Yeah. All right. Used cars. I'll check it out. Yeah, I think Blockbuster would have it. I don't see why not. Uh, who in it? Uh, Kurt Russell and Jack Warden and Garrett Graham and... Oh, I've seen it. Oh, I live. I've seen that movie. Yeah, it was a funny, oh. funny movie. Oh, man. And Grandpa Lewis, you know, Al Lewis, Grandpa Monster. I've seen that movie. I like it. Mm. All right, then, Ricky. Well, All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, you have a good evening. All right, you too. I'll give you a call sometime there. Ah, yeah, Wilma Smith. Uh, the, the, the grandpa of Cleveland weather didn't come up yet. Nobody suggested that. Maybe they feel he's doty. I don't know. You know, you can win a 2003 Ford F-150 Super Crew Lariat. That's a, tw wow, $34,420 value. Nice truck, huh? Must be pretty laid out. And the Claiborne Ford WTAM tailgate party truck giveaway. Listen for your cue to call starting tomorrow. For your chance to win one of 111 keys, one of those keys will start that truck, and you'll find out which one on September 12th on Wells and Coleman. And you could be driving home in the brand new F-150, the number one selling vehicle in, in the world for the last 21 years, courtesy of Cleveland Ford and us. The big one, News Radio, WTAM 1100. Currently 73 degrees in Cleveland. Did I miss the weather? I might have, but I'm so close to going to Cliff. I'm Rick Gilmore, the thinking man's friend. More of the program after these important words and coverage of what in the world's happening on... Cleveland's only news radio, WTAM 1100. WTAM 1100. His name is Gilly. Hey. Cheesy chili. And a hot dog. Talk so silly. Not really. He's on the AM dime. Amplitude modulation. He looks a little like Steve Buscemi. I didn't think so. His call is Evoli keep belly. Rick Gilmore on News Radio WTAM 1100. He's on Saturday and Sunday night. No, just Sunday nights. Well, Gilly's on the air and you know 
everything's all right. The following material may not be suitable for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Absolutely. And if you don't like it, lump it. You fat, bloated idiots. Well, not all people are fat, bloated idiots, but some are. Don't sack me, boy. You ain't too big for me to give you a licking. Oh, well, hey. There's another caller from Lakewood. Come on, big boys, man. Who am I and who are we? The Rick Kilmore Show on News Radio WTAM 1100. Amen and hallelujah. I still think that uh, the hamburger helper helping hand and the Arby's oven mitt should have a steel cage to the death thumb wrestling match. Winner eats all and gets a golden glove. I see Gregory Hines passed away. The dancer was what, 57 years old. I'm just curious. At, at Gregory Hines' funeral, will they play taps? Just something that I was just curious about. Hi, Bill. Yeah, Bill and Ben, for you're rough, Greg. What? Uh, what'd you call me, Greg? Greg? No, Gregory Hines had died. Was that guy a fudge packer? No, no, no. I saw him at some award ceremony. He was kissing a white woman. He was definitely, I don't think he was gay. I think they gave him a Tony for one of them, one of them Broadway spectaculars he put together. Phone number here, 578-1100 in the classic 216 area code. Toll free, triple eight seven two three wtam If we recalled the mayor of Cleveland... What celebrity would replace uh, would replace her? Seems to me we got celebrities. Uh, apparently, uh, somewhere I have here. Uh, oh, here, hold on, I'll wheel over here. You'll listen to you'll listen to nothing for a second. Now I'm back. I had some stories. Schwarzenegger acknowledges he voted for the 1994 California measure to deny social services to illegal immigrants to aliens. Disclosure offers the first glimpse of his stand on major issues. The Republican-backed Proposition 187 to deny health care and public education to illegal immigrants was passed by a wide margin. It was ruled eventually unconstitutional. Schwarzenegger has promoted himself in the California's gubernatorial recall race. Apparently, if it were held tomorrow, it'd be Arnold in the office as governor, because I guess everybody seems to like him. Democrats are... Quick to jump on this is a, a political Achilles heel. His campaign on Sunday released his tax returns. They, so, they showed Schwarzenegger paid more than $9 million in state and federal taxes in 2001 on $26 million in income. While giving more than $4 million to charity. Well, see, that does go to prove that the rich people pay a lot of money in taxes. However, over the long haul, I believe it's uh, people like us. We're the people that carry the country because there's so many of us. But that's a lot of dough, nine million out of twenty-six. Hey, would you be a bad? Would you be a bad governor? What, what if we had some celebrity from around here? We had, a, we had a list of some celebrities who might replace the mayor if there were a recall here: Drew Carey or Butch Davis, Tim Hagen, Mike Trevisano, Mary Rose Okar, Wilma Smith. Who knows? I don't think there's going to be any recalls, but do, I guess apparently I've been sitting there asking the question for a couple of hours, and that's all we got? Maybe we got sidetracked. Talking about, uh, we were talking about mice. Some, some poor guy got mice in his car, and he wanted to know, how do you keep mice out of your car? Andy, how do you keep mice out of your car? Well, <clears throat> what you do, you got to go inside the car, and I've done this. You got to roll up the windows. Got a 12 gauge shotgun with a scatter shot and start four or five shots throughout the whole car. Now, if you don't get all of them, the rest of them are running out. Okay, with that, you know, I've got to. I'm telling you, they leave. I imagine they would. They would. They, I'm I've done it. They cut right out. They're gone. I got a better idea. Yeah. Well, if he had a garage with nothing else in it that he's worried about stinking it up, right? Start the car up. Cl close the garage, roll the windows down, close the garage door.